should have to go through this. No man should have to endure the pain. Men are taken out their home every day. Innocent men just like this one. 60% divorce rate took men out of their homes. College admission gender bias took this man out of his home. The gender pay gap took this man out of his home. These men are facing homelessness right now. But with your support and just 50 cents a day, we can save them. Please go online or call this number and join the Save a King Fund for Humanity for only $15 a month. For just 50 cents a day, you'll deliver emergency relief, passport, and life-saving support to these men who could be homeless without it. Don't wait. Pick up the phone now. Meme and how. <clears throat> hey everyone, welcome back to Themis and Thoth. Grab your coffee, water, tea, whatever you're drinking, go and get that. Um, I am not sure if, um, how do I? I'm not sure. Um, I, anyway, drop it one, let's do it. Fix the mic. Fix the sound. Okay, thank you. Is the sound better? Please let me know if the sound is better. Is the sound better? All right, I'll drop a one if the sound is better. I do have a thing. All right, much back. Is it like much better or like, is it good? Let me hear. I'm going to hear it myself. Let me mute me. Let me hear. Period. Um, <clears throat> so, honestly, I should have noted this. I wanted it to be like um, a, a, a voting thing, a poll that I did, but I didn't write it down. And now literally, literally. Um, forgot what the sound was supposed to be. In any case, um, my mom has gotten into YouTube, right? Welcome, everyone. Oh, my God. I was going to just jump right in. Welcome, everyone. Happy Friday. Sober Bobo, welcome. Uh, Kay, welcome. Yazzie, welcome. Um, apparently, you guys were in my Discord watching <laughs> me <laughs> so i came into the discord and i saw you guys were watching videos off me so i had to leave like i couldn't i couldn't stay in that that was too much i couldn't i couldn't do it um so i actually really appreciate you all um i will go back to the discord after the live stream maybe so you guys can give me some critiques on um what you have tiff has been a member for 22 months Woo! thank you tiffy i appreciate that so so much like like actually so so much um so i will go back to the discord um and i will um have you guys critique me later um i love talking to you guys we were arguing in the discord court earlier and i told the discord i would drag them but i won't um it's okay to not have good taste in music that's all i'm gonna say at this juncture um but my mom was telling me uh because she's been watching a lot of youtube and whenever i see what she watches um this is the pre-show so the show hasn't started um <clears throat> I'm always fascinated because it feels like she watches women and men who are like doing what she's doing or similarly situated or some like like I could tell you my mom's videos. Like I don't know how how to explain it, but I could tell you what videos she was watching on YouTube. Um and then all my friends, I kind of started testing it and I called around um and I could tell my friends the kind of videos they watch. And I realize that it does say something, I, I, theorizing, 
it does say something about you. The people you watch on YouTube, I believe, they're either um, sort of what you are, hope to be. It. I think who you watch on YouTube and the, the content you consume says something about you. Um, and I think you sort of are reflected in the kinds of people you watch. Um, there's a part of us that's messy. Um, there's a part of us that like to joke. There's a part, part of us that is elitist. There's a part of us that is academic. And we kind of lean into the stronger parts of who we are. And I thought it was fascinating because to be messy, I went to someone else's channel that I would never watch. Um, introduced to me by my <laughs> by my Discord. These people I would never watch. And I'm going through the, the the chat, and the language being used reflected back to me the content creator. And I was like, this is interesting. The chat and the community says something about the creator, but the creator also says something about the chat. Now, I'm saying all of that to say, I hope when people, when people look in this chat, they say these people are super smart, they're into academics, they drink their water and care for their skin. <laughs> like, I'm hoping, I, <laughs> I am hoping, I, I no, no, it's not fashion fit, by the way. I mean, I went to someone who is just like, I, I imagine this is how, these are the people who my barber listens to, for example. Like, when I hear my barber and his people talking, I'm like, mm -hmm. I, I would assume these are the people you do. Uh, look, it is what it is. Um, but I am hoping that when people look at me and look at my chat, that... Look, I would prefer people say elite if I believe. <laughs> I would I would prefer people say the chat is elitist and like I would prefer that because the alternative is a mess. Um and everyone who all of my friends were very proud of um who they had in their um their watch list. And I was like, okay, period. Period. Cause like period. <laughs> so I just wanted to to start off with that um, <clears throat> serious note. I've seen your messages. I've seen the DMs. I I get it. I get it. I get it. I get it. So I'm gonna I'm gonna reach out to all the people. Um, I'm reaching out now to all the people who have reached out to me. This is you. Maya Angelou gave me permission in the way she gave her mother um, permission to, 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 to leave, right? Hear me out. I will always say this. I love that we were able to create this community. I love how much you all love and care for me. Like, I really do. The messages I've had, the kind of kindness I've been shown, the way you all show up for me on the Discord and the way you communicate to me, with me, it warms my heart. Like, I actually, I didn't think it was possible that I could have in any way do any of this online and reach as many people um, as I have. And even if it all falls apart in, an, in a minute, I wouldn't cry about it. Um, I think I've accomplished something in creating this channel that I didn't think was possible. I have gone out of my comfort zone. I have spoken on ideas that I just thought I would only think about or write about and never published. I've engaged with so many different kinds of people. This is not me closing down their shop, by the way. <laughs> Still fully open. Um, and so there is nothing you can do now. Um, that would make me feel like I have failed because I've marked this as a success already. Now, I have to say, I think love liberates. Love does not suffocate, but rather it liberates. 
To the young lady who came up and when she got frustrated, homophobia just jumped right out and she called me the F-A-G word. Um, I've forgiven you. I have unblocked you. Um, I will never really engage with you ever again because I, I understand that you were where you were when you said what you said, and that is okay. <clears throat> so to the messages. Uh, what your theme it means you strive to drink your mango juice every day. Period. <laughs> Period. <clears throat> Period. <clears throat> Uh, you are a true definition of class. I, that's why I, f I fully support you. I appreciate that, Mariah. I appreciate that. Thank you. Um, so, I have forgiven you. Um, I don't hold... I, I don't really hate. It's not a thing. It's not a frequency that I know how to operate on. So I don't generally hate. Um, I believe in the power of three times three. So if you're trying to harm me, it's probably not going to work because I don't uh, put negative energy out into the world. So be careful. Um, however, <clears throat> Loving the community, supporting the community, standing up for what I believe to be is right um, means that um, I don't, I know my place and I don't attempt to define for people something specifically as womanhood. It won't happen. I will let you know right now. In the beginning of my channel, I made this statement. The very beginning, I told you what I could talk about online and what I couldn't talk about online. The, the, the live stream is still up. There have been people who have divested from my channel because I said, this is uh, where I draw the line. I've said this. And when I see these really long emails asking me about how I show up and protection and all of that, um, I will say to you, do not let men define your womanhood. Do not let men be the arbiter of who you are and what you believe yourself to be and your path. That kind of power is yours. You do not give that to people. You do not beg people to step in for that. That is yours. You should feel so secure in it. You should feel so amazed by it that if a man steps out and tell you who you are, you can walk away and know that it's not who you are unless you accept it. It is absolutely ridiculous for me to hear women tell me that I should speak up for womanhood. It could be, it could be that that might be an expectation of me as an content creator. It might be that I should be talking about this as a content creator, but I would not be so arrogant as to believe, and this is not a pushback on any of the women who've reached out to me. I've seen the emails. I can tell that you are hurt. And I understand it. I am only speaking to you because it seems I have somehow caused you pain in my silence. I will remain silent. I have to. This is for you to define. Stop. And, and this is, I don't give advice. But if you give that much power away... You have reduced yourself to whatever patriarchy says about womanhood and that men like me get to define it for you. I don't. No, no man should. No man. I am reminded by Uppid Unicorn about BWE that men should not feel comfortable in BWE. I am not a part of BWE. This is for you. Hold that. Take pride in that. If you are here... I've never asked for super chats. I've never asked for comments. I don't really, I mean, I say like, comment, and subscribe. Um, but protect yourself in that way. Protect yourself in the way where who you are is defined by you. Come up, challenge me, talk to me, get to know me. I like getting to know the people. But don't let me be some kind of messiah figure that expresses in any meaningful way what it means to be you. 
Not even manhood. Let me let me be clear. Let, let's talk about manhood for a second. The only way I define manhood, <laughs> the only way I define manhood, and it's funny because womanhood can be defined in the same way, is the ability to care for the people that I care about, to care for people generally, and to be a positive force in the world. This is how I see manhood. And not just manhood, this is how I see me. And because I'm a man, I'm calling it manhood. But I'm pretty sure there are women who see their life the exact same way. The question that animates me every single day, when I get up out of bed, the thing that I think about um, is, what is the next right thing? That is it. Like, if I am stuck, if I am confused, if I am sad, if I'm depressed, I ask myself, what is the next right thing? Like, what, what can I do? What is the next right thing for me to do? And I engage in behaviors that will actualize whatever that right thing is supposed to be. Sometimes I don't know. I don't know. And that is the God honest truth. Sometimes I just don't know what the next right thing is. And those times can be painful, like actually painful. So I hold absolutely no hate at all in my heart. For those who, I'm sorry, I'm reading, I'm trying to read the comment and not read the comment, right? But I hold no hate in my heart for people who would believe that they have the right answer and know the right answer and engage with other people who know the right answer. If you have to step away from me and the channel, it is okay. There have, there have been people who have stepped away who I adore and care about and still do. We're still, like there are people who have unsubscribed from this channel and we still talk. <laughs> Like, like there, there, are people, there are so many people who have unsubscribed from this channel and we still message each other on um, Instagram and follow each other on Twitter and, well, X now. Um, and we engage and we talk and we laugh and people call me still and ask my opinion on things and ask me about their content. And they have unsubscribed because they said, this one thing that you did, um, I can't support it because of my brand or whatever. And I'm like, okay, cool. So it would be really, 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 really bad faith for me to say, you have to stay here. My belief is that we can disagree. You can go wherever you want to go and then come back. Like I don't go on people's channel and see comments and then come hold you to it. No. Um, so I would hope people can go and do what they want to do and then come back. I am secure enough in my content I am secure enough in my character. I am secure enough in what I bring to this proverbial table that I don't hold people hostage. I don't give people ultimatums around being around me and being around other people. I believe that you are man and woman enough to make the decisions you need to make about your whole life. I don't tell you who to be, how to be, and how to show up. All I do is tell you what I believe and hope, actually hope that you come up and challenge me. My voice clearly is not a weapon. I joke about dragging. I joke about engaging in certain kinds of way, but my voice is not a weapon. It is not a weapon for me, and I refuse to use it as a weapon for other people. I try to create bridges. I try to be honest. And sometimes that honesty might hurt, but I try my best not to cause pain. Weapons are used defensively, but they are also used offensively to cause pain. My voice is no one's weapon. It is me. It is part of who I am. And if I want to be a positive contributor in the world, how I use my voice is important. I know that that will not suffice for a lot of people. I understand that. But note that as soon as I hit 500 subscribers, I met whatever goal on YouTube I wanted to meet. It is okay. You do not have to feel responsible for me and my ego. I have none when it comes to YouTube. I'm just trying my best to do what I think is right. So with that, 
I give you permission to leave. If you need that, don't give your power to anyone. So you can leave, you can come back, you can stay, you can do whatever you want and know that I have no hate in my heart for you. I love you and every other human being on this planet that I've come into contact with that have not tried to hurt me. I hold no malice for the people who have tried to hurt me. I am beyond that kind of pettiness. I am beyond trying to control people. And so I want to let you guys know that it is okay to be okay. It is okay to want me to talk about certain things that I don't talk about. It is okay to step away because that's what you need to do. But know that you cannot force me into uncomfortable spaces. It does not work like that. You cannot attempt to use my voice as a weapon. It does not work like that. I don't give in to this kind of peer pressure. I don't give in to emotional manipulation. I don't give in to those kinds of emails. I don't. But I do love and care deeply for people who have shared their stories with me. I do love and care for people who have tried to connect with me. And I do really love and care for the community that I'm creating online. That said, all the sappy stuff is done. <laughs> I do love you all. Um, I try to read the messages. Some of them are painful. Some of them are mean, but I try. The only message I don't read is when it starts with, I'm going to unsubscribe because. If after that, because you have 15 million paragraphs, I'm not reading it. I'm just letting you know. You can, <laughs> One paragraph that is about at max 10 sentences. If it's more than 10 sentences, I'm not reading it. You are not telling me I'm going to unsubscribe and then give me work. I'm not doing that. <laughs> that is not getting done by me. All right. So with that, let's get into the show. Um, we have, I don't know if we have a fun show, but I have some stuff in the beginning that I want to talk talk about, and then we'll get into some mess. All right. <laughs> oh, someone said, we love it here, Themis. Love you. See, this is what I'm talking about. I absolutely adore you, Themis, and you are deeply needed and appreciate eloquent as usual. Oh, thank you. Uh, I'm leaving social media, and the only thing I'm actively going to engage in is your, I think, content and your channel. Oh, Yo, oh, I'm going to cry. I'm not going to cry. Sometimes when you speak, you remind me of James Baldwin, particularly in this. Thank you. That is one of the highest honors. Thank you. It's funny you say that when people are like, why do gay people want to talk? And James Baldwin was very much actively talking. So I actually really appreciate that. You've been a member for 13 months. I appreciate that. Demis, your channel is so helpful. Oh. And I, I appreciate you. And I kind of knew the response, but I also know that for those who are silently leaving, know that it is okay. Um, even if you want to unsubscribe and just watch, <laughs> that's also fine. <clears throat> Theme is just me, McDoshas, kick rock speed. <laughs> Doja wild and then drop... How are you going to tell everyone to leave you alone and then drop music? Like Doja Cat dro dropped the music. And I I probably shouldn't have said that. I'm not promoting Doja Cat. You don't, you don't drag me like that and then expect me to be up here. No. Hey, says, I've become a better communicator since watching your debates. Thank you so much. I appreciate that. <clears throat> mm -mm. Period. But <laughs> Tip is not so kind. <laughs> All right, let me start the video because we have some things to get into. <clears throat> Uh, a friend, Maxine, Maxine French has been a member for 12 months. Thank you so much. I appreciate that. <clears throat> Demis, you are the king. LOL, the real one. We love you. I know. Um, I I know. I know that you guys really do appreciate me, and I will never, ever, ever take that for granted because of all the kind, meaningful messages um, that 
that I've received. Thank you, Yazzie. Um, so I appreciate that. <laughs> Tip don't care. <laughs> Tip, Tip says, I'm a dragon. That's just that on that. Um, so I appreciate all of you. All right. <clears throat> there was a, um, a young man that was voguing. Actually, I'm going to do content. I'm going to take a vacation at the first two weeks in um, the first two weeks in September. I'm going to be on vacation, um, and the last week of September, so three weeks I'll be. But I'll have pre-recorded videos posted, and I think this will be one. So I'm not really going to talk about this. There was um, this man who was um, my mom told called me telling me about this. The guy that was voguing at a gas station, um, and he got unalived by um, some men, apparently, who did not want to see him voguing, and they were uh, shouting um, homophobic slurs at him. And immediately when my mom is telling me this, I remember Jamie, right? And how Jamie was like, in my hood or whatever, they don't like people like you and people like you should be removed. And I was like, oh, you know what? I'm going to at some point make a video um, of that story and kind of, because it, it, it really tracks with what Jamie was saying. And I think that's why it's so important to listen to people and, and listen to what they're saying, because he highlighted what, quote unquote, his hood um, looked like and how he treats people who acts differently and in his mind, people like me. And I thought that was uh, an interesting thing. But if you will indulge me, I think I want to do a story time right now. As we're talking, I think we, I want to do a story time. We disagreed that time when we rated the Schman. Still love you though, Ellen. <laughs> I disagree with all of y'all on the 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 the, the men's the, the the ranking of the men's. <laughs> I was gonna do one for the manosphere, but I realized um, I don't want to cause more pain for people, so I'm probably gonna do it anyway. Just found out that the bandit who my cousin while she was doing Uber was only 15 years. <gasps> Oh my God, I'm so sorry. Prior to you and your family, I'm so, so sorry. I'm so sorry. <clears throat> Someone said yes, because people don't listen. All right, let me, ex um, I'm going to try to tell you guys a story. Grab, grab your, um, get something strong. Move closer to the TV. You guys are all at my condo. We are like in circle right now. Please breathe in, breathe out, because I have to tell you a story. Um, this story is about why homophobia doesn't bother me. I've <laughs> look, can we all come in together? Like, can we all, like, Get your drink and and come in close together because we're we're gonna talk some real stuff now and I'm gonna let you into why because it is a sad story. This has nothing to do with the victim. I'm just talking about how I'm able to protect my peace and care for myself. But that story really struck a card, and my mom was just telling me about it, and she was really crying. So I hope you guys are like in and listening. <clears throat> Hopefully this highlights some of my psychology. It is my belief, and there are research to back this up, but I'm just going to go with my belief, that some of the most outwardly homophobic people are gay. It is what it is. I know it is not true for all of them. I know this. I know it's not always self-hatred. I know that. But... <clears throat> my psychology is such that I, that, that's how I've in interacted with the world and it has never failed. They are gay. So when I was in school, I want to say high school, but in Jamaica, high school starts at seventh grade. Um, and you can have seven, one to seven, 10, where seven, one, 
is said to be the smartest people, and 710 would be people who have failed most of their exam, and so on and so forth for 7, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. So it gets, um, it's almost like these are the people who are not doing well in school um, to the brightest people in 7, 1. Anywho, there's sometimes some overlap, and I want to say it was 7th grade, but I don't remember it was 7th or 8th grade, but whichever grade we had Motorola, um, you know Motorola had a phone called like a Razor, you know that flip phone, Motorola Razor, right? I, if you know the phone, you know the phone, right? So people had that. Um, and we had a class. It was a business administration class. I don't know why we had it at our high school at the time. And some people from different sections would come in there. But I was the only one from 7-1, right, in the class. And the teacher absolutely adored me. She loved me. So I would go in, I would do my work, I would actually help people in the work. And there was a group of about five guys in the back of the class. This was in Jamaica. They all had their trousers down, which, again, do what you want. They all had their trousers down. They smoke during lunchtime. They talk all kinds of mess, and they shout in class and disrespected everyone. Like, it was them. They were in the back. And I remember walking into the class, and one of them shouted at me, fish, fish, we don't want no fish, or something like that. And um, I had just came back from the U.S. at the time, and I just walked in. I, I looked at them, didn't really care, went to my seat, whatever. And every time there was this one guy who would always always just say some mess to me. Like, no matter what is happening, if I'm talking to the teacher, he's making fun. Um, if I'm going out for lunch and he sees me, he's saying something to me, like something mean and like disrespectful. And I never really engage with him. Like, I don't really engage with people. I feel like you have to lower your frequency to, to talk to certain people. So I don't, even for, as a child, I, ugh. Um, so anyway, I, I kid you not, I help students that are my classmates and I would help them with some of their assignments if they ask. And he came to me and asked me if I could help him. And I didn't want to, but my mom always do this thing where she tells me, and I told him no. Um, and I would go home and I would talk to like people about it and laugh about it. And my mom heard me laughing at someone and she was like, yeah, yeah, no, 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 no. You're not doing that. You're, you're going to help him. If you say you are helping people, you're going to help him. I was like, but he's always this and he will. He's like, now it's your turn to build a bridge you're going to help him and I don't want to hear anything about it. And I'm going to find out if you helped him, by the way. And so I was like, okay, whatever. So I said, yes, I would help. It was after school. He and I were in there and I'm like telling him what to do. I feel a foot under the table, like brushed against mine. So I was like, I moved it and I was like, and then he was like, what are you doing? So I, in my mind, I'm like, maybe I imagine this. Like, I, I'm kind of freaking out. It's probably nothing. He probably moved his foot or whatever. So I sat back down and his arm started like reaching over me. So I moved. I was like, yo, 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 yo. Um, I don't even say y'all like that, by the way. <laughs> this was me getting into my, my masculine. I was like, okay, yeah, yeah, no, 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 no. Anywho, he was like, yo, wh why are you acting like that? And I'm like, what do you mean? What am I acting like that? He was like, you know I don't really care about this class. And I was like, so why do you have me here helping you then? He was like, well, I just wanted to see what was up, blah, blah, blah. So I'm like, mm, yeah, no, I'm good. I left, went home. Simple, right? Tell me why. I went back to school the next day. I, <laughs> tell me why I went back to school the next day. I see this girl. She is the most beautiful girl in the school, the entire school. She is walking over to me. And I'm like, okay, cool. So she comes to me and she goes, we're going to call him. We're going to call the guy from the previous time. We're going to call him Dusty, right? So he comes. she comes over to me and she was like, are you, let me call my brother Bello, 
right? Let's call my brother Thoth. Let me call my brother Thoth. Are you Thoth's friend, um, brother? So I was like, yeah, I'm Thoth's brother. Um, but I didn't want to answer it because I was like, did my brother do something to this lady? What is going to happen? Blah, blah, blah. I don't want her to take it out on me. But then she was like, okay, cool. My boyfriend is Dusty. So I was like, oh, Dusty's your boyfriend? I was like, oh, so if you don't care about my brother, you are Dusty's girlfriend, our ex-girlfriend now. What did he tell you? Because now I am freaking out. Like, I am pissed. I am I'm ready to say, look, it, it, I didn't say anything to him. This man literally put his foot on mine. I moved away. He tried to talk to me and I left. Like, I'm trying, like, ready to, like, tell all the story. Like, just tell everything. But I calmed down because I was like, you know what? You don't know what's happening. You never give out information. Like, Dusty, I've seen him and people like him lied on women about women try to do this with them and that with them. And for me, I didn't want to be known in school as someone who did something that they didn't do. Um, look, if y'all are watching from Jamaica, hey... <laughs> Hey, it is what it is. It was a small school. You're going to know who is going to be. I don't care. Um, I wasn't protecting anyone. By the way, I just, it didn't feel like my story to tell. So she came and she was like, look, I'm so sorry. And I was like, oh, did he tell him her the truth? She was like, I'm so sorry for how, what Dusty has been treating you. Dusty is a terrible person. I broke up with him. It's fine. Like, I've never seen someone who is just so obsessed with someone else. I think Dusty is gay. So I was like, what? Is, what? <laughs> wait, wait. So I am like, my little brain is trying to figure things out now. So I'm like, wait, wait. You left Dusty. Why? She was like, I left Dusty because I think Dusty is gay. And I was like, wait, how do you know Dusty is gay? Because I'm trying to, like, did he, like, actually go back and tell the truth or nothing? She was like, yeah, um, he just seems obsessed with you. So I was like, did you ask him if he was gay? Yes, she did. What did he say? He said, no, I, he said he wasn't gay. It was fine, but I think he's gay. And I'm not about to do that. So I was like, you better be secure. Wait, let me, I saw some super chat. I was like, wait, you better be secure in yourself. Because I don't know if I were in your position, I would be pissed, pissed, right? But she was so secure. She was so secure in herself. She found me. She came to me and she was talking to me. And I was like, wait. Thank you. She, by the way, she became, I don't know where she is now, but she was one of my closest friends for the year that I was in Jamaica in high school, right? <clears throat> so I am sitting there and we're talking about Dusty. And he was like, look, everything that man says, like she didn't call him that man, but every time he would see something or we are talking about something, he would just randomly bring you up. And I didn't know what you look like. I don't understand it. So I kept asking him, why do you keep bringing up this guy? And he, she said, in one of their most intimate moments, he brought me up. And she realized that's when, like, she couldn't do it. Girl, she pulled out her phone. She pulled out that Motorola flip phone, girl. <laughs> And she was showing me messages, right? And we then, she was like, she, she was showing me some of the messages from him where he would just randomly just like message her about me. Like she was like, I just can't stand Themis. So Dusty was like, I can't stand Themis. She was like, good morning. <laughs> like, like she would say like, in the morning, and she showed me the text where you would were supposed to text your girlfriend, good morning. She's texting her, I just can't stand Themis. And she would text back, good morning, how are you? Just ignore that. She then brought me to the computer lab, and there are pictures of me from the back, because I was in the front of the class, and he was in the back of the class. 
And he was taking pictures on his Motorola phone. He was taking pictures of me, and I think it might have been MySpace. I'm not sure what the remember what the chat room was, but him and his group and her were in this chat room where he would take pictures of food and say he wanted to feed it to the fish. And people would just ignore him or just like say, dude, you're getting weird now. Like, leave that man alone. Like, Jamaica is homophobic, but my school wasn't that homophobic. So, like, he would be in the back of the class just taking pictures off my back, uh, like when I'm sitting down, and then posting it to his friends, trying to make fun of me. And people are like, everyone around, like, everyone kind of was like, this is weird. This is actually kind of weird. Like, I didn't know this was happening, by the way, but like for probably a month of messages that I could read, he kept talking about me in these group chats. Like, it was just me. Like, Every text, every day was something about me. There were pictures of me. It was a uniform school, so I had to wear my uniform. So, like, if I didn't, you would see my clothing every single day. Like, just me, pictures of me, messages about me, food he is eating. And he took a picture and sent it to the group and said, um, by the way, it was so pixelated that... Does this look like his big a, big a head? Does this look like his big nose? Does this look like his his lips? Like just random things about me, and I I'm reading it and I started feeling bad for her because I was like I can't imagine what it must have felt like for you to just to be with someone who is just so focused on another man, even if it were a woman. Like you could say, okay, he's trying to cheat or whatever. I can. You shouldn't be competing with anyone. But like, if someone is gay or like so invested and obsessed with a man, like, I don't know what it feels like to be the woman in that relationship because that that man kind of don't want you. And even if they want you sexually, they're mentally looking at another man. And I am sitting there like, oh my God. But you know what? She was, I need to find her actually. I need to find her because she was that girl. She was like, oh, yeah, no, he's gay. Found out he was gay. I don't care what he says. I was over it. Now, let's be friends. Girl, when I said we were friends, <laughs> we were friends. When I would come to the U.S. and she would be in Jamaica, we would still talk. Girl was living her best life. Uh, she started dating a white guy. I think she's in Canada now. Like, if... I, don't quote me on this, well, whatever, but I think she she's in Canada living her best life, but she just left him. Now, the reason I told the story was a couple months after, he got into a fight with a guy that was gay at the school. And he was in a fight because he claimed the guy tried to kiss him. Uh, that's not what happened. I, I found out what happened. He and the guy were making out and someone walked in on them and he started beating the guy, like just started pummeling the guy that he was kissing just seconds before because he was trying to hide the fact that he was gay. Bad, terrible person, right? But in those moments, I realized something fundamental about human nature. One, I don't trust what people tell me. Listen to them and watch what they do. People, and, and it sucks because, like, I'm not talking about these men who attack this young boy at or this other man, voguing, minding his own business at a gas station. That I will do in a video separately. What I am talking about, however, is a group of men who are attracted to other men who do not know how to deal with their attraction, and so they externalize it in really harmful ways. I am also talking to the women who are with these kinds of men, leave. It's not worth it. Don't give advice. Stay in your relationship if you want to stay in it. They might be bi. I don't know. If you're into that, then good on you. Don't know. But it would be my opinion 
that you don't stay with someone who is so obsessed with someone else because that obsession is not just hatred. Mm -mm. I promise you, when you hate someone, you don't you don't engage in those those ways. And so when I'm hearing these really horrendous stories about um, people being beaten and killed, and when Jamie comes on here and say, in my neighborhood, we don't keep, we don't like people like you, we don't engage with people like you, we get rid of people like you. Why? 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 Why is it so important that another man's masculinity must reflect the very specific ways in which you act out your own? I don't know how to mentally adjust myself to say, oh, it's just hatred. It is hatred. But I think from my experience, and this didn't happen one time in my life, this has happened a lot of times as I have um, grown and engaged with people, even in the U.S. it happened. Like, even in China it happened when I was there for two years. Like, this is something that has consistently happened, right? So when Jamie comes on here and says things that are sentiments that I've heard before, I'm not saying Jamie is at all. But what I'm saying is, it does not affect me in the same way. It doesn't affect me in the same way. And I don't argue with people about this. I don't go back and forth with people about this. It is just what it is. I let people be. Because those people who engage in these kinds of behaviors, they are dangerous. They are extremely dangerous. They are unhinged. To be obsessed with someone like that it is just a sign of psychological problems. Just like <laughs> DSM-5, girl, look it up. Like, it is a problem. But also in my experience, it turns dangerous because the, 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 the object of these people's affection is also a reason why they would hate themselves. So you are liking and obsessed with something that you hate, that you reject, that you don't want to be a part of your identity. I don't know what that kind of cognitive dissonance and how you recon reconcile that kind of cognitive dissonance. I don't know how you engage with even defining yourself when you are on the quote-unquote DL, living this way. I don't know what that means. I don't know how to deal with it. And so I stay away from it. And to all the people who are watching me who are gay um, and openly so, my heart goes out to you and to the people you are around. I know that a lot of you don't have the kind of resources to take yourself from the the environment that Jamie has spoken about and how they don't like those kinds of people. I wish, I wish, I wish with everything that I had that I knew how to help and how to better serve um, people like you. I don't. Um, and it's just an unfortunate reality that you have to be suffering at the hands of these men. And these women have to suffer at the hands of these men. Some of these men don't even want to be with the women, but because of the social expectations that is placed on them, they stick beside the women and then abuse these women. They are not strong enough to leave because of their identity being so tied to the woman that they're with. They're using them not just for resources and a place to stay, but also as a beard. To those women, I would tell you also to leave. But I know it's not always that easy. So I am sorry. My heart goes out to the young men and women who have to live in these kinds of circumstances. I don't. Regardless of what you might see on YouTube and how people might attack or whatever they people do, I don't. I just look at them and file them into the irrelevant category where these men are just obsessed with me and probably want to be with me, but I don't go with, absolutely not. So that's how I deal with it, and it doesn't bother me. And so I'm sorry to all of you who have to go through this. I'm sorry to that young man whose family just lost 
a loved one. I'm sorry to that young man's friends. And it, it is just a horrendous, horrendous situation. And I am not immune to certain kind of language, but to other kinds, I'm good. <laughs> to other kinds, I'm good. So please don't worry about me. Pray and care for the people around you who don't have the capacity to move out of these kinds of environment where obsession turns violent. All right, let me read some of these super chats. <clears throat> Not her coming to you as a woman, lol, the mess of it all. It was messy, but she was, I love that she came to me. I, I absolutely adored that she came to me. I loved that she engaged the way that she did. I love that she was so secure because the girl was a beautiful. She could have had any man in the school she wanted. And uh, that's probably why she was like, girl, back to the back. What Sinji say, back to the streets. <laughs> She pushed him back to the street because she was like, absolutely not next. She she, she said, next, I'm not about to sit here and, and, and be with, no, if you don't want to be with me, you don't have to be with me, but I'm not about to sit here and listen to you talk about a man, obs literally obsessing over a man you think is gay girl. No, <laughs> she, she's that girl. She is that girl, period. <clears throat> Uh, that's why we keep telling you all the men who come over here foaming at the mouth have a crush on you. You got that yardy milkshake. <laughs> I don't, I don't, I'm trying to think that it's not ever like obviously because that, 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 whatever. I don't want to say that. A lot of closet homophobic guys mm -hmm. low key have a femme boy addiction. Case in point, Governor Randy, yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. No, I believe this fully now. Like, I've always, this is, by the way, why it's so easy for me to deal with certain, like, when Jamie comes up here and start talking at being homophobic, like, I don't want to, but my brain files it in that group. Like, it just, it just does. Like, even if it's not true, it's what I, I need to go talk to my therapist. I've never actually talked to my therapist about this. I probably need to introduce it now, because, like, that's how my brain files it, and I don't, I, I don't engage um does dusty protest too much <laughs> yeah 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 it's like eh, at some point girl no <laughs> tried to distract himself with the most beautiful woman in the school and still couldn't shake his attraction to you these dudes who speak about you are, yeah the thing is even if you are like bi Girl, I if I if if I see me and I see her, I'm choosing her literally every time. <laughs> I'm choosing <laughs> I'm choosing her every time. If you saw this girl, I, that's probably what she did. He did though. He found the, the 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 what he believed to be the most beautiful girl in the school as his beard. I think that's what he did. I think that's what he did because she. But what he didn't know was she wasn't insecure. She was not insecure, and she was not. She was very ready to move on. Uh, it reminded me of male identity, male identify, I think you were saying woman. <clears throat> uh, reminds me of how black men treat black. Yeah, no, no, that, I think that's an extension of it. I think that's an extension of it. Um, your brain filing system is a protection mechanism. Yeah, it is. It is. <clears throat> All right. So now that that's out of the way, I will make a video on um, what happened. I, 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 my mom told me about it, and so many of you reached out about it. I didn't want to talk about it, but then after I remember Jamie, what Jamie said specifically, I now have to do that. Like, I need to get what Jamie said and what happened, and I need to put them together in a video. I'm going to do it. I'm going to do it. I had a gay male friend in high school, and the same dudes who picked on him are now sliding in his DMs years later. They were on the football team. Yeah. This guy was like the uh, track star and uh, not, I mean, it's football, but it's soccer to you all. But yeah. It's it, it. Look, <laughs> dust dust protest too much. Who said that? Was that Gia? Someone said dust dust protest too much. <laughs> and yeah, mm -hmm. 
<laughs> just <laughs> yell something homophobic. Themis, girl, you just want me. So like, yeah, <laughs> yeah. Like, that's how, that's how it works. Like, blah, 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 blah. I'm like, all right, girl. So it's going to be a no from me. Like, I'm not one of the, th- this is not kindergarten. You don't pull someone here to tell them you love them. And even if you were super sweet and kind with it, it would still be a no. So that, that's kind of, that's, <laughs> that's kind of how I view it. I mean, it's, is it right? No. But that's how my brain works. So I wish I could change it. <laughs> like, it's not from me. You do not go to Hollywood. All right, let's get into the mess. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> I need to go look at that. Thank you. It sucks. Um, it, it, it really does suck, though, that, like, someone lost their life over over this. Like, imagine your, quote-unquote, voguing, right? <clears throat> imagine you're voguing, um, just dancing, living your best life, and someone just come over there and starts fighting with you, telling you to stop. And like, I don't know, it's just, um, it's just really sad. Anywho, let's go on. Um, I had some videos that I wanted to show you all. So let's start with this one. Um, This is nepotism at its highest form. So there was a young lady who entered the 100 meter sprint. sprint. Um, I think it was a qualifier for the uh, some kind of championship. Don't know. Um, I don't know how she ended up here. I think she was from Somalia. I think that that's a Somalia. Um, and they, I just want y'all to watch this with me, because ain't no way. In absolutely no way this should be happening. In the past, the did this woman just skip? Did she just skip? On? <laughs> did she? <laughs> Did she just skip? Did she just skip over the line? <laughs> she just she did a hop and a skip over the line. <laughs> Man, it gets. I feel like this gets funnier every single time. Like every single time I watch it, <clears throat> every single time I watch it, it gets funnier. Like how? Wait, I'm skipping to Sober Bobo. Sober Bobo has been a member for 33 months, which means you might be my lo- the, the longest lasting member on my entire channel. This means you've been a member since I gained membership. And I know you've been here since I was at 200 subscribers. I do know that much. Thank you so much like this is like amazing i'm taking a screenshot of this and let me let me pose real quick so i look good in this picture because i'm gonna take a picture of this and post it somewhere in my home i think this is my oldest uh, like <laughs> um and thank you Sobo Bobo. I I I really appreciate this. I I appreciate that. 
once upon a time he used to come up. Um, I miss those days. <clears throat> uh, I had a, oh, I read this, I think. Thank you, Giggles. Maya says, oh yeah, thank you. Uh, so Cupid shuffle across the finish line, period. If this is not the highest, if this is not the highest form of nepotism, I don't even have to look into this backstory to figure out how she got here because this don't make no sense. This makes absolutely zero sense. No sense at all. How you go, go <laughs> how you going to dance over the finish line after you came in dead last? <laughs> how you going to dance over the finish line after you came in dead last as if you did, did what needed to be done? <laughs> <sighs> the privilege it takes to have that much audacity. Right? I don't feel like she's ashamed of it either. I don't feel like she's ashamed of it either. <clears throat> Anywho, let's move on, because I actually do have um, some things to say about... Kerry Hilson did a song where she decided that she would drag Beyonce. She said Beyonce needed to go to the left, to the left, that she wasn't all that, that she can dance and sing, but she's not that girl. And I'm like, Carrie, this was a while ago, by the way. This is why she got canceled or whatever. But she came back. And this happens a lot, by the way. We are music execs try to pin women against each other. And they do that because they want um, they want the artists to get some traction. They want to make money. They want to cause controversy. And if this artist gets bigger, then period, they win. But I don't think they're thinking about the longevity of the, the, the artist in doing this. And so they don't care if the artists they are trying to promote fail so long as they make back enough money or make back the money. And I think it was such an unfortunate thing because I think Carrie Helson, it is Carrie Helson, right? Yeah, girl, I, if, you, if that's not your name. The other day I called Iggy Azalea Azalea Banks. So, <laughs> and I'm sure when we get to the PowerPoint for um, Holly, I'm going to call her Chloe at some point. Like, I, I'm going to call her Chloe at some point. Um, so, whatever. Carrie Hilson went uh, and did an interview, and she shed some light on this. And I actually felt bad for her, because I do remember this time as a high-ranking member of the Hive. Unfortunately, I, too, had to divest from Kerry Helson. Because, you know, Beyonce literally do her thing on stage. I mean, she's eating everyone's food in the way Holly just came back and decided to eat everyone's food. But Beyonce is just doing Beyonce. And by doing Beyonce, obviously, she is the best in entertainer of our generation. That's not a question. You can fight with yourself, not with me. And so... When she came after her, I was very much confused. And so I decided, mm -hmm. I don't know, Carrie. I don't know. Knock me down or knock me down and pretty girl rock and all of that. They were cute. But like, now you're putting me, you're giving me an ultimatum. You're telling me it's either you or Beyonce. And like, no. But, she did an interview, and I think it was a, a good interview, and I'm going to play, um, it's a, a minute of the interview, I won't put it on the screen, but I'll play a minute of the interview, and I felt bad. I did. I, I, did, I did. Someone said, Team Sweetie, who put <laughs> Yes, I am a high-ranking member of the Hive. Whoever put Sweetie needs to be on timeout. Pull up in the money in a big body bands. <laughs> what sweetie be talk? What what does sweetie talk about? Anywho, sweetie said she make song for pretty girls, so obviously I'm not at the target audience. Um, cause girl, in no way. All right, <clears throat> so let's hear what Kerry Hilson had to say about why she attacked be Beyonce. Or, you know, stomp out someone's <laughs> dream. That's what it felt yeah. like to me as an outsider looking in. 
By the way, the interviewer, forget Claudia Jordan, girl, you need to stop hanging out, talking about as an outsider looking in, it looked like Beyonce, it looked like they just stomped out a young star. No, they didn't stomp out a young star. Carrie Hilson, from our perspective, went after the queen and got stung. Like, you don't go into the hive and try to attack the queen in the hive. Like, what, what do you mean? And by the hive, I mean the music industry. That is her hive. <laughs> by existing in this world, you're in Beyonce's hive. Someone said, witches call their people a hive or some foolishness. Whatever you want to call Beyonce, you can call Beyonce. It is what it is. It's her world. We are just in it. I am sitting there, and Claudia is out here talking about some... It felt like they came after you. Yes, you went after her first. To be fair, Carrie does take accountability. Like, she does. And my heart goes out to her, like, not my pocket or wallet, because I'm not going to buy the music still, because what? But, heart go girl, hats off to you. But I realized that her light was dimmed, after that moment. It is what it is. Um, it's the price you pay, you know, when, you know, when you're early in your career, you feel that you have to listen. And when you buck, they buck harder and they make threats. And those threats are huge ones. And you, you, you know what I mean? You don't, you don't feel like you have a choice. I really didn't feel like I had a choice. It was do this or this will happen. And I'm young, I'm early twenties. And I'm like, uh, I, they're like, sing this song. You don't have it. You know, you're here for a couple hours. Blah, blah, blah. I flew in town. It's that it's the whole, if you don't, then blank. So you, you learn though, you learn to fight harder. I didn't have, um, enough fight in me in my, I was maybe 20, 21 and have enough fight in me. Um, I wanted this my whole life. So <clears throat> Car Carrie Helson, <clears throat> uh, how do I put this? I want to be kind because she did what needed to be done, and I appreciated her for it. The thing is, she chose what she thought was an easier target because of the pressure. Because I believe, had she not done that song, she would have been bigger. And whatever they tried to do to her, it wouldn't have left a bad taste in a lot of people's mouths. But I can understand feeling like your entire dream everything that you've worked for is reliant on doing what they told you to do, which is go after Beyonce. This is the same thing that happened where, I think it was Sonny, but don't quote me on that. Um, they were looking for a rapper, a female, a, a female rapper to go against Nicki Minaj. And they went to this amazing British artist, won't say her name here, and she declined because of the contract which was requiring that she made a diss song against Nicki Minaj. And <clears throat> I think this happens too often in the music industry. I think it's sad that a lot of women can't just be there and do what they need to do and give what they need to give, and based on their talent, that people will love them or not love them and appreciate what they bring to the table. You have to create these kinds of controversy in an effort in an effort to get sales and get known and get popular. I, I think it's kind of atrocious the way that the music industry does it. In any case, more ratchet foolishness before we get into the music thing, because I definitely don't want to let this out. So I'm going to be traveling the world, I think. <clears throat> and going to travel the world, I start looking at planes and looking at things, and I don't know why. Um, I'm practicing. I've been practicing. Yeah. I've been practicing stoicism. And um, in practicing this, um, one of the things that I learned as a child, trying to 
do the stoicism thing is you should think about the worst possible outcomes of every situation. The problem with my brain is that that doesn't shut off. I get obsessive a little bit with like ideas and um, thoughts and ways of fixing things and what I'm doing. I obsess with my own thoughts in, in some ways. And so I catastrophize every event. Every single event I catastrophize. So I am thinking about going to Asia. Tell me why. Let me play what happened. Let me let me let me show y'all what happened. So this came up on my on my timeline, and I cannot get it out of my head. I cannot get this out of my head. If you don't know what that was, that was a plane in South Korea. A passenger opened the door, opened the, the emergency exit. They, they just opened it. I don't know how you were able to do it while you were in the sky. While they were landing, it, it, the plane landed safely and only nine people were injured. There was some difficulty breathing, but they are fine now. Every single time I'm in an airplane, I can say this. Every single time, I imagine every single way I could die. I, I literally just sit there, and you can't tell, because I will sit there and, uh, and just sit, and, and you don't know what's going through my head because it looks like I'm calm, and this might be one of the few times where my emotion doesn't show on my face. After I ran through, I run through every single way I could be unalive in the plane, I start inventing ways. I start thinking about Superman actually existing, fighting an alien and running into the plane while they're fighting in the sky. That's how my brain works. So now, one of the things that I never really thought about is the door opening. The door opening while we were in the sky. Never thought about it. Never did. In fact, when I get, if people move me next to the um, exit, I, the emergency exit, I'm like, yeah, no, I'm good. Can we, I, I want to go like, no. Now, I want to be at the emergency exit. <laughs> I'm going to want to... I'm going to want to be at the emergency exit because I need to be able to protect myself from people who would open the emergency exit. Mm -hmm. Now I'm going to be wanting to be at the emergency exit, not to help in case of emergency, but to prevent someone from causing an emergency. That's what... <laughs> yeah! <laughs> This is in the middle of me booking a flight to go to see Beyonce. This is in the middle of me booking a flight to go see Beyonce. This is me in the middle of me looking up flights to go travel around Asia. Why? W why? And I don't like this because now I'm thinking, is this a sign that I should sit down? J like, I should sit and not do it. This is while I'm talking to my Discord and my moderators about our thing that we're thinking about doing. Why? Anyway, I'm going to do all of it. So it is what it is. Please know that it is what it is. <laughs> I'm, gonna, I'm not going to stop. I'm just going to keep going. So I just don't like that. Now, the next thing I want to talk about is Dish Nation. <clears throat> Nina Leakes came out and said she should be as rich as um, the Kardashians. And everyone was up in arms. And I'm confused as to why people were mad. She said nothing wrong. If you're going to sit there like, Nina Leakes should... No, absolutely not. I wish New York from Flavor of Love would say something like that. But as I'm listening to this Nation people discuss this, the reality is, like, even if you are like, okay, Nini, that was too much. 
I don't believe, I don't agree that it was too much. She literally carried the entire Real Housewife franchise. I don't mean the Real Housewife of Atlanta franchise. I mean the whole franchise, the entire thing, the whole thing. It was hers, right? And as I'm listening to these men talk about it and debate these women about the mistreatment of Black women and Black people generally, but Black women specifically in the entertainment industry, I am so confused. I am so confused as to why there is even an argument. I don't understand the argument here. What is the argument here? What do you mean? They're telling you about a reality that you know about. You know about this reality every time black men come up. Why don't you know it about it? Tamar is up there um, talking about it. What's her name? Cho. Ah, woo, 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 something woo. I know this lady. I know her. She reviews a bunch of, I love her videos. Is it Jesse Wu? I think it might be, just, anywho, I apologize. Uh, I love your videos. If you ever see this, I, I so apologize. Um, anywho, let's hear this conversation because immediately now, if, if they will allow me to play it, <clears throat> people are missing that Nini and Kim K had the same management for years. That's why she made that comparison. It wasn't random. Thank you. I don't even know if they had... Um, the thing, I didn't even know that. But you don't carry an entire franchise and not be filthy rich. Like, you don't, no. Mm -mm. No, you don't. Nope, you, no, you do not. You do not. Absolutely not. I'm not here for that. I No. So I, I want black women to keep speaking up. The funny thing is, black men would benefit from this too. So black men should be speaking up about the... Um, the sort of ways in which we are undercompensated for the work rendered. Like, why are we... All right. I feel like there are people... Sorry, I'm going off on a tangent and I shouldn't. I hate people who... Not the people. Apologies. I hate when people feel so lucky to be at the table that they don't negotiate their place at the table. Like, it's so annoying. Like, you know... you are not supposed to be at the table on the ground eating the bones and biscuits. Like, that's not where you're supposed... You're supposed to be at the head of the table. <laughs> Look, put me at a table and see. Put me, put me at a table to negotiate and see. Absolutely not. There are people who don't even negotiate wages because they're like, ah, no, thank you for this job. No, absolutely not. Thank you for this job. Apparently you need me. Where do we start talking about this pay? these time off, child care, like I have, th there are things I need from you for this job. It's not a one way. It's like interviews. Sorry. I did an interview workshop. We'll get back into workshops. I promise. We usually have free workshops where people, I try to get experts to come in. Sometimes I host them and we do it over Zoom where we talk about different topics and help with resumes and, and things like that. Sorry. If I am in an interview, please note, you do not save time at the end of the interview for me to ask questions. It ain't going to happen. It is not going to happen. That is not how I work. If you are asking me a question about myself, I am going to ask you questions about whatever organization I am planning to work in. I am trying to see if I am a fit for your organization in the same way that you're trying to see if I'm a fit for the organization. What do you mean? Oh, what are some good things about yourself? Yeah, that's cute. These are some good things about myself. What are some great things about the firm as it relates to me? What do you mean? Diversity. What is it like? Oh, non-existent. You're thinking about it. Good. Uh -huh, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Yeah. I, I, mm, all right. What are some bad things about yourself? I, like I, it, it's a back and forth. Like I'm not about to wait till the end when I don't remember the conversation. In fact, your questions to me are triggering questions that I need to ask you. If I am working somewhere, I actually like the place I'm working. That is a privilege. That is a privilege. And actually, Sinji always says this about relationship, where she says beggars can't be choosers. This is true. 
This is also why people telling you that your degrees don't matter, do not listen to them. It allows you to negotiate because you no longer are a beggar. Like, you you don't show up. I, I don't like us showing up in the world as if we need to apologize for the space that we occupy. Don't apologize for the space you occupy. Apologize when you do something wrong. You existing is not something wrong. You sitting at that table telling them that you need more money is not wrong. It is absolutely not wrong, particularly if you find out that other people are getting something that you are not. Like, no. And I don't think we advocate for ourselves. And the price we put on ourselves is the price people will pay for you. Because you're not about to accept just anything if you have a higher standard. You know what I mean? Um, I say that and I acknowledge a tremendous amount of privilege. I say this and I acknowledge that not everyone feels like they have the freedom to walk away when they need to provide for other people. I can appreciate that. Please make yourself invaluable so you can negotiate. However, you need to do that. But also know that there are people who don't have as much talent as you right now that are out there negotiating their pay. And even if you don't get what you want, it's better to ask for it and try and know that you did what you could because the worst they can do is say no. I will negotiate. Now, if you're in an industry like mine or like whatever where the, the, there is a standard sort of wage happening, then, then fine. But if there are opportunities for pay negotiation, you better negotiate and do not, one more tip, do not drop the first number. Because wherever you drop your anchor and they provide there, y'all going to end up somewhere in between. What you need is for them to drop their number and you go above it and then y'all can negotiate in between. Even, <laughs> even if they give you a higher number, wait, sorry. Even if they give you a higher number than you wanted. So if you wanted 140 and they were like, the best we can do is 150. You should probably come back and say, well, Based on these things, we could expect someone in this position to get 180. I am willing to negotiate because I love this company, and y'all can figure out how wherever, wherever y'all fall between 150 and 180 is perfectly fine because you only wanted 140. <laughs> and don't be too excited when you get whatever you get because then they'll feel duped. Just continue and say thank you. I appreciate it. I will think about it. And then you accept it later. Don't accept it there either. <laughs> and if it's over internet, if it's over email, then that's even better. Why? Right? Because they can't check your tone. Anywho, so that's that on that. You're welcome. <laughs> do not drop your anchor first in a negotiation. Absolutely don't do it. Do not do it. And do not ask for what you actually want in terms of pay. Unless you're going to be, unless you're willing to walk away and don't negotiate at all, if you don't get what you want, do not give what it is that you want right away, and and probably go above it. All right, let's hear this video. <laughs> Sorry, I had to get into that. I might seem soft, but I'm a I'm a tough negotiator. Here, um, so here's the destination. <laughs> should be bigger. Uh, there are a lot of black women in reality television that opened so many doors and, and had the same opportunities but didn't get the same push. But wait up, Miss Jason, girl. Now, I understand all what you're saying. Now, that's a little delusional, but... Wow, yeah, what is? Yeah. Okay, girl, Miss Nene, honey, had a lot... And I love her dearly. I love Nene dearly. Nene had a lot of opportunities. She was on Glee. She was... Sorry, cutting in again. It doesn't matter what she was on if she wasn't getting compensated at the level she was supposed to get compensated. Like, I I hate this. Like, why are you the one? Everyone now should be like, yeah, sure. Yeah, you deserved it. Even if you don't believe it, then stop talking. If you don't, like, it, it's like, if I'm on YouTube, sorry, this is actually a, a, a true thing. 
if I'm on YouTube and there is, let's say, a content creator that I disagree with who is doing a lot of good, right? I realize that there are men who are trying to use my interactions with people because they can't interact with them in, in that way to say, stick it to them, man, stick it. Because I become a man, by the way. I become a man whenever they think I'm doing what they want me to do. Anywho, I don't engage that way because it would literally diminish what those people are fighting for. And if the the bigger issue literally trumps that of what my small disagreement is, I I don't think you're defining love or um, I don't think you're defining relationship or I don't think you're defining divestment. Like whatever it is, I'm just making up random things, by the way. Why? Who am I to just go over the cause problems with people for no reason when they're doing the Lord's work? Absolutely not. Stay in your corner, stay in your lane. No one asks you, sir. <laughs> I'm talking to myself. <laughs> this is how I talk to myself. Stay in your lane. Sir, ain't nobody ask you all that. Do your little content, do what you need to do, and go about your business. Hey, Amara. <clears throat> like, what the F? Why do black people always want to less on one another? Let other races do it if they eat well. If we, yeah, that's what I don't understand. Like, why are you, like, talking down? Like, wh why? Why? The, Nini said she should be as rich as um, whatever. You think it's delusional? You can stay over there and think it's delusional. That's not what she thinks. Let her be. It would help everyone if people were allowed to engage. Hey, Monique. Hope you had a wonderful, wonderful time. I miss seeing your comments here. I love and appreciate you. Thank you. Uh, Jenny has been a member for 19 months. Thank you so, so much. I appreciate that. I need to negotiate and not to just accept it. what's being offered to me at work. I'm earning a second master's, and they'll say it doesn't relate to the specific role. Thanks for the reminder, Themis. I appreciate that. Let me know. Come in and let, let, let us know how that goes. Because, yeah, you should definitely, 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 definitely negotiate be negotiating. There is someone actually in here that was in my negotiating negotiation class in law school, actually. And the law professor tried to play us, but she she fought for it. And girl, I absolutely love and adore you. I won't tell the story because it's not my story. I mean, I guess I was part of the story, but yeah. Then Georgetown came there was a racist teacher that said as soon as black people walked into his class at Georgetown and he got fired. So that, yes, to the bracket style negotiation, period. Hey, V, welcome. All right, let's continue. Because these people talking about Nini delusional, I'm sitting here like, mm, no. You're going you to have that woman carry an entire show. Like, she carried Bravo. She didn't even carry the show. She carried Bravo. Oh, my God. Y'all need to put some respect on her name. Some respect with a K. So, all these different damn shows. No. She on stores. She had everything. Yeah, because she had to figure out how to make an income because the pay is not fair. Hello. The pay is not fair between Kim Kardashian's, the Braxtons, Come or on. Atlanta Housewives. Well, the pay yeah. might That's not, not be, fair. The pay I'm not sorry. fair, but we're she doing the same thing. Why are we not getting the same price? Yes. Well, okay, so I mean, but there's a gang of facts. You know what's funny? Why are the black men fighting the black women over this? What, there is a white guy there just really not saying anything. <laughs> and I appreciate that. And that's because that's kind of how the world is working now. Like, let these women advocate for their higher pay. It will help you. I promise you it will. And that's not even to be selfish, but that might be the only way I could get through to these men. Like, that they negotiate their pay and they engage in this way helps you better negotiate your pay. In fact, you're the one who should be negotiating your pay, negotiating their pay, standing up for them too. Like you should be a part of this. But if you, you can either lead, follow, or get out the way. Like nobody, no one has time for this. 
Nobody has time for this. If you're not about to lead the movement, get out of the way. Like, it is what it is. Like, you are going to benefit from it ultimately. You sit there and be get, getting the, the, the byproduct of, of these women's hard work. Meanwhile, you're fighting them while they're doing it. Like, you're doing the network's job. Like, you're sitting there, and this is the part that I don't like. You, by pushing back, you are making it so that the network does not have to come out and justify themselves. That's what you're doing. When Monique said she wanted to, she wanted to sue Netflix. <laughs> when Monique was doing Monique, period, just let her be. Let Netflix come out and argue with her. Don't argue with, like, if you're not going to boycott Netflix, because, girl, everyone in the family is using Netflix. <laughs> but if you're not going to do it, just shh, let them explain themselves. Let them explain themselves. Someone, I, I, oh, yes, um, LB, I, w I could do a mock negotiate. If, if Monique wants to do it too, Monique was really good. Um, I'll ask Monique if she, she can do it. Um, cause it would be nice if she, uh, she, to bring her in to do a negotiate. Monique, if you're hearing me, hey, um, I would love if you could come in and do a negotiation seminar. It doesn't premiere on YouTube. It is on um, Zoom, and it's a sign-up. Only 100 people can do it. So please look out for that. I will do one. Yes, I will do one. Because the way how LGBTQI plus men still participate in misogyny and the diminishing women in something that's not talked about. Yeah. And this is something that I don't like either. I think they're, don't give anyone a pass. Gay, straight, bi, blah, 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 whatever it is, just whatever. Do not give people passes because even women can exhibit misogyny in this way. Don't give people passes because I don't know if these men are gay. I'm just going to assume based on what you are saying, Adrian, that someone up there is, but what they're saying right now is not helpful. <laughs> Sorry, the words aren't coming. Fact is like the yeah. viewership between one show and another show. The fact that like on the Kardashians, you could mention all your businesses. The show was about the and businesses. And we couldn't. Oh, we couldn't. We could not. We had to pay for it. So the smoke should be more so with the networks, which it sounds like it is. And you are a big star. People know who Nene Leaks is. People know who Kim Kardashian is. Not the same thing. No, what she said. Viewership, viewership, viewership. You can no. Oh my God! Why would you diminish these women's work like this? I can't. I can. I would drag, but I said my voice is not a weapon. <laughs> <laughs> it's not the same thing. Without a doubt, these are all valid, valid points. Super valid complaints, and the disparity between races and reality TV, and the results—they're a hundred percent bad. Yeah. I don't. I don't think you can discount the biggest video in the world. Mm -hmm for a few years. I think that's okay, all. Y'all real funny. Y'all real freaking funny. Not when I created Braxton Family Values and Kim Kardashian got the hundred million dollar check. Let's talk mm -hmm. about that. Mm -hmm. So well, we're not even going to sit here and talk about sex though, and on. television creating TV shows so who deserve what when. It is unfair. Point blue. And shun her. I feel like the. Yes. And this is the problem. People are like, <clears throat> people are like, you are too loud. You are too aggressive. No, you have to get loud and you have to get aggressive because the problem is these people want to walk all over you. These people want to gaslight you into believing you are not experiencing that which you're experiencing. Absolutely not. Tamar is 100% right. And that 100, 100 million or whatever million she's talking about, she deserve it. She deserved it. The Braxton family value was that girl. I absolutely adored the show. Love their mom. Love Tony Braxton. Tamar, you are that girl vocally. You are a bit messy, but it is. 
<laughs> y'all remember, y'all remember when Tony was holding auditions for her backup singers and Tamar went up there to pretend to be Tony. <laughs> <laughs> the way I used to watch all of that, Tamar is a younger sister. It is the youngest sister, and she shows it. And she shows it. I look at her and I'm like, mm hmm. Like, I, I do actually really, really like Tamar. Like, I like Tamar. Um, don't know why she was with. Vi anyway, um, none of my business. Too much. All right. <clears throat> so, Tamar. I'm with you. We stand behind you. Let me know who we need to boycott next. We need to get you that check. The real removed you. And when they removed you, I don't remember what happened. You said some things. Lonnie said some things. People said, girl, I don't know what, they, what was happening. What I know is I stopped watching after you left. You brought what needed to be brought. You gave what needed to be gave. You checked Jeannie who needed to be checked. Like, you are that girl. And I don't know how you monetize your personality and being a host or whatever. Um, I hope that you find it because you have it. Whatever it is, you have it. And I love it. Not only that, you are a vocal beast and I love them vocals, period. Anywho, I'm going to leave you alone. Um, Rip Tracy uh, really adored her. Um, I have notes on her, and I feel really bad, so I won't say them. Um, I didn't always like the way she was treated. I didn't always like the way she was treated. Um, I, 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 anyway, I, I'm not going to get into that. But when she passed, I was really sad because I wanted them to come back together, and I wanted her to win because it always felt like she was kind of excluded. Um, yeah. Anywho, <clears throat> Tony was my favorite. I'm not even going to pretend like there was any competition, but yeah. All right. So one more video that we need to watch um, before we continue. <clears throat> now, what I need you to do, what I need, <laughs> what I need you to do, I need you to look up. And I need you to look at what is being stated um, to this, what this woman is saying, and then look at what, what the cameraman is doing after while she's talking. While she's talking, look at what the cameraman is doing. Sorry, before that instruction. Why is Sierra... I'm going all over the place, apologies. This just popped into my mind, and I don't want to forget it. Why is Sierra making songs with Chris Brown? What? Sierra. Anywho. All right, watch the cameraman. I'm actually not going to unmute myself, so you might hear a slight echo. with the airlines um, in order to get uh, flights actually on time or not delayed as much. Just curious if there's any work happening there. Yes. So we've seen a, almost a doubling in terms of improvement on on-time performance since last year. That is a reflection of all the work that we've done across the ecosystem. <laughs> I don't care what this woman got to say. She's out here. <laughs> She's... How are you... <laughs> How are you gonna tell this bow face lie? How are you <laughs> let's count how many flights are on time? <clears throat> One, two, three, four, five. There are six flights that are on time. She said that the, the, the reporter is asking. <laughs> What are y'all doing to address all these delayed and canceled flights? She's saying, yeah, we we fixed that. We have tripled, doubled, blah, 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 the ecosystem, whatever, whatever. The shade cameraman decided that while this woman is telling us that everything is fine, they're fixing the system, he decided to just move the camera. 
He did. <laughs> He decided to just move the camera up while she's talking, while she's giving us this long soliloquy about how they're improving their system and not to worry about anything. We are in real time, as she's talking, looking at all the delayed and canceled flights. We, we <laughs> And she's there with the, this, the most professional voice I have ever heard. She is just giving it to us. In fact, if... If that cameraman did not go up, I wouldn't have known. I would have just assumed it was white. Someone said that's journalism at its best. <laughs> it is journalism at its best. Wait, let's let's get into this again. Cause she she I don't like people playing in my face. Someone said what airline? Um it's spirit. Let me stop. I don't know. <laughs> I don't know. Spirit. Actually, what's the, the other flight? I have a sto- another story. It's a quick one. I'm going to fly Northwestern or Southwestern. One of, one of the Westerns that no one ever flies because it's apparently um, a wealthier pl- plane. I don't know. Someone said wealthier plane or something. I asked a friend to book my flight with hers so that we can show up together at this thing. It's not spirit, but it is one that I think is worse based on my, 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 no, it's not spirit. It's not frontier. It's either no, it's not, no, it's some, no, I don't know what it is, girl. Maybe it's frontier. Maybe, I don't know. It's, it's one of, I don't know. Anywho. So I told her to, to book it and she booked it and sent me my itinerary. And I like, I before I go anywhere, I like my mom needs to know where I'm going and like my family needs to know where I'm going just in case. Um, girl, why my family call me talking about some, you need to rebook, you're not getting, <laughs> you're not getting on this plane. So I figured it was one of those planes. So period, I would, Hey, if you see me there, please don't say anything. <laughs> I'm not joking, by the way. I am like a hundred percent. Like I, I'm being a hundred percent. I didn't even notice until my mom called it out. I didn't book the flight. So if you see me, j- just don't say much. Hug, hug, kiss, kiss. Like let, let's let's just pray together. That's it. That's all I need us to do is pray together. Um, yeah, it wasn't spirit though. If it was spirit, I would have, um, I would have, it should have been Delta because I could, I can go to the Delta lounge or whatever. Anywho, let's continue. System together with our partner airlines, with agencies, reducing processing time, reducing wait times and fine tuning operations with our air carrier partners. And we see the great results that have come from that. Thank you. <laughs> and we see the great results that have come from that. The results, by the way, are up above her head where everything says delayed. The results, she said, we see the great results and the cameraman rightfully is showing the results and everything says delayed. Y'all just be telling these bold-faced lies. <laughs> Canada out here like girl. Anywho, I just I just can't. I'm not talking about Chris Brown, by the way. I'm really not. And so we get to a young man from the thumbnail who decided to go out on a date with a person. We talked about this on one of the podcasts, and I'm not gonna get into it either here, but A lot of people have been saying, we need sympathy for this person. We need to engage meaningfully with this person. We need to care for this person. This person is a good man. How you know? How do you know this? Let me put it on the screen. How do you know this is a good man? What about him says that he is a good man. I'm not saying he's a bad man, but the idea 
the idea that because you're ugly mean wait by the way i don't think i'm not calling him ugly <laughs> I, i'm not i i'm not calling him ugly at all i don't i don't generally call specific people ugly but we know beauty standards and we know when you fit it or when you don't blah 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 so again <laughs> why are you laughing in the chat I am not going. Oh my god! <laughs> no, I didn't. <laughs> no, I didn't. Y'all need to stop. I'm not fighting with you in the chat. I am not fight. I'm not fighting about this in the chat. I I really am not fighting. I don't. I I'm not calling him. I think we have a tendency to just assume that because we we think people are ugly. I'm not saying he's ugly. I'm saying that we describe people as ugly. People describe me as ugly, girl. It's fine. I just don't believe them. I think they're lying. I think they're trying to cope with this beauty. Anywho, I think because we call people ugly, <laughs> I'm going to remove the chat in a minute because I can I cannot look at this chat. I can't. Y'all play too much. <laughs> I don't know how to continue because y'all playing in my face right now. And I feel like y'all are intentionally trying to misinterpret what I'm saying to be mean. By the way, I hope you guys, if you guys are live chatting in the Discord, please let me know. I'm in the general Discord um, and I'm responding there. Well, I'm not really responding. I'm lying. Um, I will try to respond, but I'm like actually reading the Discord. Anywho, <clears throat> not calling him ugly. <laughs> you've been, now you've been a member for 12 months curry up and eat i am not looking at y'all <laughs> i no. i want to i'm gonna remove the chat in a minute because y'all can't i'm trying to get through this and y'all keep playing in my face who was the bad guy from author that's it <laughs> <laughs> All right. Stop commenting, stop laughing, stop messaging. It's not what it seems. I'm not doing that. O'Shea said to call him ugly, right? I don't just randomly call people ugly. I was trying to express that we have a tendency when we think someone is ugly, then we think they are good people. It does not ring true always that because you are you think someone is quote unquote ugly and you shouldn't be calling people ugly, all of that stuff. I'll put it out there in the ether for my good karma. But don't call people ugly. No one is ugly. Beauty is in the eye of the beholder. God made all of us in his image. I think that is important to say. Stop. Yeah, please stop. <laughs> I'm getting uncomfortable because that's not what I meant, and I feel really bad now. <laughs> I feel bad, and I feel bad for laughing because y'all are making me laugh. Please, please, please. I beg you. I am begging you. Please. All right. <clears throat> Because people are quote unquote attractive or traditionally attractive does not mean that they're good people. That's all I was trying to say. That is it. Nothing more, nothing less. Um, and that's it. I feel like I can't talk anymore. So I'm just going to, let's watch it. Um, thank you. <clears throat> he has a nice haircut. Bless his heart. I mean, the line look lean to me. I mean... <laughs> Thank you. They're jealous of you, themers. themers. Haters gonna hate. Period, V. I pre exactly. 
All right, let's continue to watch because y'all are y'all are not gonna let me do it. And apparently, I got stood up. I don't know what to say. Like I'm trying to do everything right to be a gentleman. I brought flowers. I've been consistent talking with this girl for two weeks, trying to get to know what she likes, what she doesn't like. I made plans. I picked the restaurant, the day and the time. You know, I've done everything to be just the kind of guy that would value somebody's time. Like, I just, I'm just looking for my person. I'm just and that's where you messed up. <clears throat> If you're looking for your person, that's too much ownership. There is no your person. You find someone, you love someone, and then you guys become one with each other, if you will. You're not looking for your person. I don't like the fact that people believe that even if, let's say, he's a good guy, because you're a good guy, that people are attracted to you. No. And that you're a good guy means you deserve access to women. By the way, I think it is wrong. If that lady stood him up after telling him that she was going to go to this restaurant with him, because he said he found the restaurant, he booked the restaurant, he was being a nice guy. At no point did I hear him say she accepted the offer. <laughs> I'm kidding. Of course, I'm just as assumed she accepted it. <laughs> Wait, someone said Kenny. What Kenny did? Someone said, I think it's a skit. Oh, well, let me find Kenny. <laughs> Gotta speak like it to a king. Anywho, so if she did this and stood him up, even if this is like all fake, by the way, I'm going to assume it's real. Um, but even if it's fake, then I'm just going to continue to assume it's real regardless. So... <clears throat> Even if you are a good guy, it does not mean women will be attracted to you. I want to see the pictures you had on your profile. Because let's be clear, he could have been in that restaurant and the woman came, woman came and was like, absolutely not. <laughs> <laughs> that wait would that be wrong I don't think that would be wrong if you misrepresent how you look on an app or something and someone shows up and before you see them they see you and they are like oh that does look like him but like 15 years younger bye not, bye I don't think look if I show up and you don't look how you look, I will leave. I'm not, no, I'm not doing it. <laughs> I'm not doing it. I'm sorry. Not doing it. So we don't know what happened. So we can speak to what that woman did and what that woman was going through and what, what happened. Like, cause we don't know. What we do know is that you hopped yourself online to cry to the public. That alone disqualifies you from literally every single person I know. Every woman that I know would have disqualified you for that. And again, I will reiterate, because you are a good guy does not mean you have a right to a woman. Because you're a good guy does not mean women generally will be attracted to you. And this idea that, oh my God, I'm a good guy, I did everything, that's fine. They probably still not attracted to you. Not you specifically. I'm sure, I am sure there are women who are into you. The question now is, are the women who are into you, right? Rather, are you into the women who are into you? The women who are into you, are you into them? Let's talk about that. Because I'm sure you can find someone who look... I mean, <clears throat> I'm sure you can find someone who look like you. And or like you guys can really fall in love and care for each other. And I think that's part of the problem. I think sometimes we shoot so far out of our league and then we... <laughs> 
I'm going to remove the comments. I'm absolutely going to remove the comments. Not y'all giggle, are going to be able to comment, but. <laughs> <laughs> he look like him. He looks like him. Someone said that they thought that was Ice Cube. Ice Cube who got punched in the face. And no, that's not Ice Cube. You didn't think that was Ice Cube. Uh, Themis, we just messing with you. Oh, thank you. Y'all still doing it, so it doesn't feel like messing. Chica has been a member. Don't succumb to ableism, Themis. It's okay that you have a severe ugly. <laughs> Sorry. I screamed because I'm mad at myself. That is not okay. Y'all are not okay. I think we have problems. I, I think we have. I think <laughs> someone said it's not Ice Cube, it's Ice Bar. <laughs> I am done. We are moving on. No further words for this man. Um, I want to move instead to a doctor. This doctor is a gynecologist and he wants to know why women aren't coming to him. <clears throat> Being a good girl doesn't prevent you from getting cheated on. Two weeks of effort doesn't guarantee a date, sir. Entitlement, right? It's giving entitlement. It is giving, it is absolutely giving entitlement, um, Afro. <clears throat> and I say, hey, what a wonderful... <laughs> Not the theme song! April Alial in timeout. Ali all in timeout. Everyone, the whole chat, everyone is in timeout. Because I no theme if you can't move on. You have to watch his uh follow-up video. I'm not watching his follow-up video. I I was on this man page and I was over it three times. Every second apparently he's a comedian, so it could have been a skit. Theme is the, I know there's a follow-up video. I'm not watching it because y'all are out of pocket in the chat. Yeah. Y'all are out of pocket in the, the male guy now is the absolute worst. I feel like he should have just sat there and left it alone. He should have sat there and left it alone. I don't know if you're joking, but he should have sat there and left it alone. And he deserves to be dragged all across this internet. He do. I'm not watching the follow-up because you all decided that you don't want the follow-up because of how y'all are acting out. You do not call people ugly. We don't do that in this. <laughs> We don't do that in this community. The only person you get to call ugly is me. That is it. Because I won't believe it. You can call me it all you want. I won't believe it. <clears throat> Sorry. All right. <laughs> Wait, no. <laughs> so this guy, he's a gynecologist. And he was mad at people for not wanting to come to him. He was mad at women for not wanting to come to him to be their gynecologist. And I don't think he actually cared to know why. Because people were in his comments trying to explain to him why. One lady actually said that after being, you know what, he she has a severe fear for men, right? He responded that he's not the guy that did it or something like that. People started dragging him and he deleted the comment. Why are you deleting comments, sir? Why are you responding to comments like that? I'm glad there are women. She, he's been very disrespectful to some of the women in his comments explaining anything. Thankfully, he's deleting stuff. I don't know if he's deleting stuff. 
I am going back to his page and I am not seeing the things that were once there. So maybe he's not there, to, um, a, a lot of comments there. So maybe my algorithm changes and I can't find them. So maybe, I don't know. So let me play what he said, because even in asking the question, it feels like there is a lack of empathy. Actually, let's do the drag up front, a, the, the, a soft drag up front. Here's what I don't like. I don't like that people believe that they have a right to other people. If you are a male gynecologist, you decided to get into this field. At some point, he said, I am a male gynecologist. I can't change that I'm a male gynecologist. One of those things you might not be able to change, but the other you can definitely change. You chose to get into this field. Nothing wrong with that. Do you, right? But you don't go into this field without trying to understand. You don't just jump in the field and just feel like you can just take over and then be mad at people who've been working in this field. Be mad at people who engage in this field a very specific way because you are now uncomfortable in the field you decided to get in. That don't make no sense to me. You are asking us why women don't want to go to a male gynecologist as if you are not looking out into the world and seeing what is happening, even if it's wrong. Right? Let's say it's wrong to choose someone based on gender. Let me put this up. Let's say that's wrong, right? Let's say it's not great. Let's say that um, women should go to male gynecologists and there should not be an issue. That's the perfect world, right? But does their opinion not matter? Does Do you just completely disregard their experience? I don't look for doctors who are just good. I want you to be exceptional, let's be clear. But you have to have empathy. Like, you have to fundamentally care about my humanness. You have to care about me as a humanness. I need to be able to trust you. If I don't connect with you in that way, it's very difficult to connect to, to have you do things to me that are so intimate. So that you ask the question highlights that you have not done the work to be in these spaces in my mind. And I'm not talking about the academic work. I'm talking about the emotional work. I'm talking about the interpersonal skills that you need to develop to be able to speak and connect with people who are coming to you with some of the most intimate problems that a person can have. You need to do that work. You don't come out here and just be like, oh my God, why are you mad? Why are you? It, it's, it's massage. Look at, look, look at this. He's been making videos. I should not be speaking. He's been making videos like this for a while, talking about this is misandry because a woman can do what a man can do, but a man can't. Girl, what? What? You're really going to start a million man march to get, to get women into your, 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 your place? Really? There is a way to talk about what you believe are inequalities that exist. I will not pretend like you cannot feel how you want to feel, but you do need to do some of the work required to get to certain kinds of conclusion. If you don't understand why in today's world where young girls and young women are being abused would feel circumspect when it comes to going to a male gynecologist. If you can't do that mental work, I'm not sure how you can connect with the people who would come to you. Because he has patience, and I will go through some of this. You have a lot of patients coming into you and people trust you with their bodies. So you should be grateful. It would be like me having a platform that is mostly women and being mad if women decide to go to other women on the platform to go engage with them because they feel more comfortable there. Or other men, who knows, whoever you go to, and I'm sitting up here like, why are you over there? I would be all kinds of entitled. That would be a 
problem. That would be on the level of a kind of narcissism that I don't understand. You are a free human being with autonomy to decide who you want to engage with. It is weird to me to see you on here. You chose this field, decide not to research this field. Then you are mad at people for not engaging with you in the way you want to engage when you chose to be in this field. Like, I don't understand that. You need to do the work because you need to be able to sit with a woman who would come to you and explain to them why it is you understand how difficult it must be for them to be sitting across from you experiencing the world that they have experienced outside of you if you are the quote-unquote good guy. You need to be able to make that person comfortable. The only possible way you can make people comfortable coming to you in this field is if you know why they wouldn't be coming to you. You need to know that, not them. You need to make them comfortable. That is your job. Because they are coming to you a lot of the times with issues that they don't want to talk about. Your responsibility is to make them comfortable. We tell the truth over here. <laughs> Funny <okay. laughs> <laughs> that is your truth, not mine. <laughs> Thank you to Wells. Um, sometimes the face reflect the spirit <laughs> to creepy. Um, the matter of fear radicalized me against bottom. <laughs> Fear is stop. Um, Sky Love says, after I share my beliefs, I had a guy not tell me, I know it's been a while, but I need you to open your legs to me. He thought he was funny and... See, this is a problem. This is a problem. This is a problem. I will not use it to indict the entire group, but like that's the problem. Uh, he should have worn one of her few suits. <laughs> then women would have chosen. <laughs> Let me play this. Let me play the the video that went viral. Because I've been what I've been doing is talking and not playing the video. I need help understanding. So he said he needs help understanding. Let's hear what he needs help understanding. <clears throat> and then why certain women will only go to female gynecologists, even when you need major surgery. <laughs> See, there's a problem. You said certain women, not women. So you realize there are women who would go to male, but you want to know why certain women. So when certain women tell you about their certain experience with men and their reaction to sort of men being close to those kinds of areas, I don't know how you don't understand why certain women would do this or not do that. Like, and I don't think this is a rhetorical question either. He just didn't want the answer. Demas, he's also his sister. Ooh. Oh, you've been a member of Noble B 22 months. Yeah. Yeah. <sighs> Thank you. I appreciate that. When I have members for so long, it's, I don't know. It feels like I'm doing something right. Thank you. So when you're looking for BBLs or liposuction, these same women will fly all over the country to find the best doctor with the best deals. They're looking for the best. Or if they're getting your hair done, makeup, eyelashes, you name it. It doesn't matter if it's a man, woman, whoever is the best, they're going to find them to get their hair done. It don't matter if it's a man. But if you need surgery, on one of the most important things of your body and your future, it has to be a woman. That's kind of like me saying, hey, if I have an issue with my... Maybe, and maybe you, this is so misogynistic, by the way. He talked about misandry, but this is actually misogynistic. The fact that you believe that women choosing women to do certain kinds of surgery means that they are not looking at the best is actually steeped in misogyny. It is. It definitely is. Because what you just did is you 
unknowingly or knowingly, decided that you know that the men are better. And even if you didn't know that the quote-unquote men are better, what you did know is that by choosing the women, they weren't quote-unquote choosing the best. That's what you just said. The problem is best changes from person to person. The idea of the best, unless you are creating your own objective measure for it, each individual in deciding what doctor they want to go to is choosing what they think is the best doctor for the job based on their information. So no, they're not, not looking for the best. The best in their mind is just not you and you are mad. And that's fine. You can stay mad. But that they're going to a woman does not mean that they're not going for the best. It's misogyny. Talking about misandry, misandry, misandry. Girl, no. He, is he a real doctor? Remember the last cosplay? I think he's actually a real doctor. And it's really, it's so unfortunate. I did go through his um, TikTok. And I'm, I have some videos that I do actually want to go through with y'all, with him, because there is a huge problem here. And first, it seemed roughly sort of like innocuous, like it wasn't a big deal, like I didn't see anything out of uh, uh, like weird. But there's one video that bothered me, and I'm going to play it, and, and I'm going to tell you why it bothered me too. Like it actually bothered me. And the fact that you don't understand why people are uncomfortable is a problem for me. Like the problem you don't understand why people might be uncomfortable. If you are particularly the good guy, the good guy in a college dress, if you don't understand why people might be uncomfortable, um, that's a problem. The way he's acting, I wouldn't trust him with monopoly money. Also, I've had bad experiences with male nurses and doctors. Uh, thank you, Kenta on. 22 months. All right. I need, we need to do something to celebrate people who have been members for over 20 months. Like that's like, that, that's, that, that's like a milestone, right? Like Sober Bobo have been here for over 30 months. Like that, that is, whew, that is the beginning of my ch channel. I am so appreciative. Thank you. Like actually, thank you. From the bottom of my heart. Thank you. I'm going to go make another pillow for tonight and order oxtail because I didn't do it last night and watch The Witcher. I'm just going to get all my pillows and build a huge fort and just lay on top of it and watch The Witcher um, and order food. Um, the other night I went to a hotel uh, I just kind of just wanted to go to a hotel um, got a massage this tip, this is for you, because you said I don't do self-care. Um, I went to a, a hotel um, for a night um, around where I live, but it was like a beautiful hotel. Got a massage, got food. I, I posted my desserts on, on there. Uh, someone said, ran up a bag. I did, because I just needed to relax and like just be away for a minute. Um so uh, it was nice, like it was period. So tonight I'm doing a pillow for it. So self care. Um, <clears throat> uh, he's literally targeting black women without stating the obvious. Yeah, yeah. Let me show you. And the, he has a, a, black, a lot of support. Uh, forgive his ghost follicles. <laughs> eh, not his phantom follicles. He knows not what he, do, he says. How sure are you that he's not a diversity hire at his clinic? Fairest, someone please put Fairest on timeout. Mm -hmm. Wait, the Witcher was kind of disappointing. Say, say it ain't so. I'm glad you heard that, Tiff. You've inspired me to take care of myself. A prostate, I only could go to a man because he has a penis and he has a prostate. Women don't have it. So I exclude all of the phenomenal women surgeons because I need a man. Somebody please make it make sense for me because I'll have women that'll DM me after their surgery to ask my opinion about their surgery that they had, right? But they won't never come to me because I'm a man. So please somebody 
make it make sense of why everything else doesn't matter about gender but when it comes to surgery for your future and your body that you are looking for the best woman possible not to say that there aren't some phenomenal women surgeons but if you look for the best you would just exclude it because it's a man drop comments in down below help it make if they are phenomenal women and this is why it's self-centered and self-serving if you actually believe there are phenomenal women who can give the kind of care that these women need, then the only objection you have to them going to women is that they're not going to men. Because if you fundamentally believe that these women are good, then you shouldn't have an issue with these women going to these women unless your objection is that they aren't going to men and you want that kind of equality and you are sitting there saying, why would you want someone to do the surgery? The surgery where? And about what? Because that is important. And if you don't know why it is that a woman would want another woman to be their gynecologist in the way that clubs have um, men search men who go through the entrance and then a woman search a woman who goes through the entrance whether or not this is right whether or not the feminists want to deconstruct this it is not a point of contention here i'm saying that our society is structured in certain ways that you might not feel good but they benefit certain people men and put women at a disadvantage and women are vulnerable and are in vulnerable situation when they are exposed in this way and the fact that you don't understand that to me and i'm not saying that you shouldn't but to me it does not make me comfortable you being around my daughter my niece like no absolutely not if i walk in and there you're there we are leaving no, mm -mm. you should know this. You should actually be on here saying, I understand why women don't do this. Male gynecologists need to do a better job of differentiating ourselves from the experiences that these women have gone through. You should be selling yourself. You should explain to them why you are better. You should know why they might not want to come to you and you should be addressing that. You, that's what you should be. You should be selling yourself. It's such a weird thing. If people don't want to come to you, maybe, and it's not all the time, but maybe, maybe it is you. There are structural issues. There are issues around blackness. All of that is true. But sometimes the problem is us and what we are creating, and what we are doing. And maybe people don't want to come to you for certain things. Maybe stop being mad at the people who are leaving, the people they are going to, and start thinking about how you can be better at that which you are doing. I'm not saying this is true. I'm just saying this is a suggestion. Stop crying and whining about everyone else and start making yourself better. Make yourself so good that they can't say no to you. Do that. Instead of whining and crying about everyone else and people leaving, just be better. Be better. I promise you, if you are the best, if you are great, if you are exceptional, you will get clients. I promise you, I know that for a fact. If you get referrals, people will come. I hate, side, side note, I shouldn't, I shouldn't, I shouldn't, I should not hate this. But I don't like when people just whine and cry and make all kinds of excuses, but don't take any accountable accountability be better like until you are the best until you are exceptional until you are great until you have done what you need to be doing i don't want to hear you crying about everyone else like, and i know that's wrong i know that's wrong because no one is perfect and you might never be the best and that's such a high bar to meet but 
unless I see you constantly working on yourself, unless I see you constantly being better, unless I see you trying, then I'm not about to blame everyone else for your failure. Like, I can't do that. If you're just out here blaming people not doing anything, then no, absolutely not. Just be better, do better. People will come, go to school. I don't know. Figure it out. Learn to talk. I don't know. Present yourself better. Try to figure out how to do get empathy. If you don't have empathy, try to find it. I'm super disappointed in him. I went to high school with Pierre, shaking my head. Oh. And the thing is, I know y'all don't like this, but I do actually. It there is something like nice when I see a black person because like obviously any human being doing good is good but to be at a disadvantage black people generally when i see black people who have like professional degrees or career entrepreneurs um write a book for example that is good um people who engage in certain kind of way man or woman by the way let me be clear man or woman there's a part of me that leaps with joy that like I am happy to see people succeed. Like, I, you know what I don't understand, actually? <laughs> Another tension. I don't understand people who sit and hate on people all day. I don't get it. I don't understand it. I don't get it. I don't like it. You know, people who, like, hate on you, but, like, they will make up some excuse so that they can attack you. But under all of that attack, it's, like, just envy and jealousy. Like, that's what's actually animating what's happening i don't understand those people like i i really don't because like when i like when i hear someone said i graduate i'm like period we need to celebrate i just bought a house let me decorate a room for you i just did this i'm always celebrating I celebrate people because I love, 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 love to see people win. And maybe that's because in the back of my mind, if I ever need something, there is one more person that I could go to. So maybe it is still selfish. I don't think that's why. But like, I love to see people win. I love it. So I don't understand how people could hate it. So for him, like, I want to see him just do well and be great and whatever and it's just like you're just whining and crying still like just, why like wh why are you doing this like you got the degree you did well you passed your exams like you are that guy hopefully i don't know and so now i want to see you live your best life and do what needs to be done because you've gotten your professional degree and you're up here whining about why people not coming to you. He's mad at women for not going to him while simultaneously showing women why they shouldn't go to him. Just, yeah, that's what I'm saying. Like, you're just wrecking your business. Like, why would you do that? Anywho. Whew. So I started going through his channel because I'm nosy. And I was like, maybe that one clip doesn't represent who he is. Then I saw this one, and I was like, oh, my God. So it's the same video. This one just didn't go viral, where he's complaining about um, misandry, and if misandry is like, why would you not come to a man, blah, blah, blah. So no understanding, right? <clears throat> then I started watching, and this is pretty innocuous again, like him just, and I don't hate this, by the way. There is this new movement to not make professional jobs seem like all the way buttoned up and say that I can show up my authentic self. And I think for me, there are certain things that I'm just not about to do and people I'm not about to engage with, but like I can understand you making being a doctor more accessible to people who might look like you, right? And to show them that they can also do it. I'm hoping that's what you're doing. Girl, I'm hoping. Because it's very difficult. If I walk into a doctor's office, forget what kind of doctor you are, and I see the hat and the shirt or whatever, like I might be making judgments in my head and I'm trying my best 
to not make those kinds of judgments and trying to figure out a more reasonable way to judge people's credential. Um, but the, 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 the immediate judgment is not good. Anywho, so he did this. I'm not going to let anybody speed up my process. I don't care what's happening out there. That's the great thing about, you know, having ultimate confidence in yourself is it doesn't matter what's happening. I don't care what's happening. I don't care what you're on or this person's on. This is what I like. Pretty innocuous. Not going to judge too much. I do like that maybe he's trying to change it and tell other men who might be like him that they can do it too. And I can appreciate that. Will he be, I mean, I, he's not my doctor, obviously. I'm, I don't, I don't go to a gynecologist, but would, if he was like a regular doctor, would I be his patient? Probably not. Um, and I feel bad for saying that. So I'm going to try to work on that actually, because I don't think those judgments are fear. Um, Yo, this is a public service announcement for all healthcare professionals, uh, doctors, nurse practitioners, anybody that has the ability to write prescriptions, family, friends, friends of friends, or anybody that has our cell phone numbers and have the ability to contact us outside of our normal hospital or clinic routines. Anytime there's a call for cold, headache, sore throat, you guys want to self-diagnose and call us and... Uh, uh, I don't mean to bother you, but can you write for me a Z pack? Uh, 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 oh, uh, can, can you just write for me some amoxicillin? I only played those to give you his personality. But this is when it started getting weird to me. He started putting his patients out. I'm not going to play. I'm going to play this one, this video. <clears throat> this video was when it started bothering me. Because I was literally just going through. And I don't think this is an actual real patient, but look what happens. So I know you mentioned pelvic pain, but are there any other issues or concerns that I need to address? Now, sorry, I was skipping through because I didn't want the sound to, like, be copyrighted or whatever. We saw what happened. I don't think that was a real person. I think that was simulating something. I hope that was simulating something. But what? Like, this is how you are going to present online, like... So I should have a vision of you. Your joke is that you're doing whatever you're doing down there and music start playing and you start dancing. It is supposed to be a joke, I think. But it is odd to be making these kinds of jokes while simultaneously asking the question about why women might be circumspect about having a male gynecologist. I don't think those two things go together. It is these kinds of jokes, I believe, that would put women off. What do you mean? What do you mean? Like, what? So, after going through that, I started looking to see if people were responding to him in his comment section about why. And not only were people responding to him, people started, people started clipping the comments and making videos about it. I found two that I want to play for you. So let me play the, what, what they were saying. There was this other lady. Um, I don't like this. I am sure she must have signed a waiver to be on his Instagram, uh, his TikTok. Um, and I just don't think particularly kind of work he does that the patients should be shown on his TikTok. Like, these women are going in for specific things about that are really, really private. And I don't know that it is okay to request that they be on your TikTok. Look, I'm not saying don't build your platform. Build your platform. It feels a bit too much 
it, it feels like there's too much pressure and the power imbalance when someone is hooked up on the bed about to go in or out of surgery that you are going to shove a camera in their face to talk about your TikTok. No. Mm -mm. No. None of your patients should be on your TikTok. That is my belief. That is my belief. What do you mean? I am sure they signed a waiver. I am sure of that. But that's not okay. Like, I, no, no. The fact that you, like, even if those women don't know that they shouldn't be out there like that, and maybe they want to and it's fine, but the fact that you as the doctor, you are putting them out there on your platform, and I am sure there are other groups of doctors who do this. I have not gone into doctor talk. I, I, I don't know anything about the doctor TikTok or whatever. They haven't done it. If they're doing it, I hope that it's not these kinds of doctor, like being a gynecologist, Mm -mm. I don't like it. I, and I'm not saying it shouldn't happen. Maybe it's helpful, blah, 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 blah. But mm, no, sorry. I just saw something on my phone and I want to make sure that I'm not making this up. I am making it up. <laughs> it wasn't who I thought it was. <clears throat> All right. So... Two women that I found who made reviews, I found like four actually, but two of them that I wanted to talk about is under that video he made asking why women, blah, 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 some women started talking to him and he, here is one of his response and they made a video about it. The callous disregard we live with our decision shruggy. I, I, I can't. This comment alone, I, I would never come to any doctor that said something this callous and disregarding of someone's feelings, period. And, and to think that, oh, this surgeon, this male surgeon is better than this female surgeon or whatever. That alone, to say that, my mom for years went to only male gynecologists because of religious trauma of oh, women aren't supposed to look at other women and men aren't supposed to be with other men and blah, 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 blah. Had nothing to do with actual skills. It was bullshit. But this regard, this callous dis. I was willing to give you the the benefit of the doubt because you know thinking maybe you truly didn't understand what the issue was but from your statement this is you go back and take a look at his video take a look at the comment that he is responding to here where a woman is saying it's because of the trauma it's because of the experiences that we've had and this is his response. So I just posted a video where I was like, yeah, I'm sure you're probably a really good surgeon, but it's very, very clear that empathy is a problem for you. And that's another reason why I don't, we don't want you around our lady parts. Look, if you have been essayed and the last thing you want is, a man around, is, is some man around your parts, you want to make sure that if you do, and this man comes highly recommended from other women that that you have empathy and you understand how sensitive the topic is and how difficult it is for us to allow someone close to us in in that area or, you know anywhere around your your reproductive systems your your vagina it's just you don't I have to calm down because I'm this comment really, really rubbed me the wrong way. Um, you don't have empathy. And for any woman that sees this video that looks at the responses here, 
you're probably still going to have problems having women or having women that choose you for any surgery that has anything to do with their vagina, because I wouldn't want you to come around mine with a 10 foot pole. So if I needed to have surgery, you're, you would be the extremely last person that I would ask to do that. And you've made that very, very clear with your comments in your post, you know, the, the post itself was kind of cringe, but looking at the comments that you've made, like to people who you asked for, like, why, why this is it? Why is this an issue? Why is it that I'm having trouble getting women to sign up with me as their surgeon for their gynecological, gynecological issues? This is why. And you're probably going to continue to have issues. It's like, dude, please, this is, <sighs> yeah, no, no. No, just absolutely not. I don't have anything else to add to that because to add anything else to that is to dilute a message that she just delivered beautifully. How you do it, throwing the B word up there like that on, on, in response to people? You, unprovoked, unprovoked, you ask people for their opinion. You ask people to explain something to you. If it was a rhetorical question, then you probably should have let us know. But you don't ask people to tell you. Someone is telling you about their trauma and how difficult it is, and then you respond, including the B word in there, absolutely not. Not one more client. No. The entitlement that people feel is actually astounding to me. The fact that you believe and people believe that they're entitled to other people's time and energy in this way is the, the epitome of narcissism. I am not calling him a narcissist. I don't know this man. Not talking about him specifically. I'm speaking generally now. It is such a problem for me to sit back and hear men and people complain about women choosing. Uh, how ridiculous is it that we actually believe that women belong to us? That must be what it is. It has to be what it is. It, it has to be. I'm trying to imagine something because like the entitlement is so staggering. <laughs> like it's like you don't even know why women are choosing women doctors. It's not like you did a survey and figure out that most women choose women doctors because they are women. Like you don't know. You don't know. All you see is that women are going to women doctors and you apparently have patients. You have at least two. You have more based on your videos that you've put out of them. But you have your patients. The fact that you are not just grateful to have patients is weird to me. It is just weird to me. Again, I'm thinking about me and I look in this channel and I see a bunch of um, comments and I see a bunch of likes and I see human beings, human beings, but hear this, they're supporting me and I don't have a way to make them continue to support, continue to support me. And I wouldn't want that. Because it actually feels better that you're just here because you want to be here. The idea that I own you and I own where you go and I own what you do. Like, what? No! If these women want to go to the best and they think the best is a woman, what's your problem? What? What? You, you, they, they should be forced to come to you. You want to go attack those? Because this is an attack on, on those other gynecologists, by the way. The women gynecologists are somehow less than him being a man. That's how I see it. Oh, by putting a qualifier on, maybe there wasn't a qualifier for women. Maybe they're like, ah, the first issue I have is comfort. 
I need to feel comfortable. And I'm looking through, and these are the people that I feel comfortable with. And it just so happened that most of them are women and some of them are gay. <laughs> so I just, I, just, I just had to throw <laughs> I had to throw that in there because I saw one of LB's comment about a gay LGB, uh, an LGB, um, a, per, a person who is LGBTQ or one of, and an uh, a gynecologist, and she was fine. So I, I just had to throw that in because I saw it. <laughs> what I look like? What do I look like? Getting mad. Why are you mad that they're going, there? be better, sir. Be better. What did, uh, what did Melania Trump said? Be best. <laughs> Melania Trump told y'all, and I'm quoting her, be best. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> that is a problem. <laughs> <laughs> whining and crying on internet because people didn't choose you girl what whining and crying online because people didn't choose you sir get a life get some mas what they say masculinity is the ability to stand on your own and be strong and no blah 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 I don't know what they're talking about get some masculinity <laughs> Yeah, I, I, stoicism is really good for your skin. Learn stoicism. We should know what you feel, sir. We don't get emotional. <laughs> we don't get emotional. You're just lashing out online at, at people who did nothing. What did those other gynecologists do to you? Absolutely nothing. You're mad at the women for choosing them. Why are you mad at women for choosing someone other than you? You probably should talk about the women you are mad at and not the person they are choosing. Why are you upset with the person they are choosing? Why are you giving these backhanded slaps at women who did nothing to you? These gynecologists... <laughs> these, these gynecologists... <laughs> you know, and this is how you know a hater when you see one. <laughs> This is how you know a hater when you see one. What? You think these other women gynecologists just going to shut down their practice so you can get some customers, so you can get some patients? Why? Why are you mad? Now you're mad at the women for choosing someone else. Maybe they didn't choose you because they didn't like you. And actually, this is an, an this is an unfortunate. <laughs> this is an unfortunate reality. I'm gonna make, be mad at the chat for you. Yes, I'm gonna be mad at the chat. <clears throat> A lot of the chat, the people in the chat say you're ghetto, and that's why they don't want. They wouldn't choose you because you're ghetto, and they can't stand ghetto. I don't think that's fear. I don't think that's right. Uh, I think people should look to your talents and what you have done. But it don't seem like you have empathy. You literally just cursed out that woman. You literally just cursed out that woman in your comment. Now, I don't know what you said because the sentence did not make sense to me at all. Like, it, I don't know what you said. But what I do know is you used the B word in your response to her. So you calling women the B word is already a problem. You lack empathy. So these women don't want to be called all kinds of B word from their gynecologist. So they probably don't come to you because of how you treat them, how you talk to them. Maybe you remind them of the very kind of men they experience out in the world and they're like, no, nah, no, I'm good. You just don't got it. If you don't got it, you don't got it. And I'm not saying you don't, but please show people empathy. Show people kindness. Try to actually engage in thoughtful uh, research around why women might not have chosen you. 
but also talk to these women who have not chosen you and ex let them explain to you, not about the other gynecologists. Don't let them talk about the other gynecologists. Don't do that. Ask about yourself. Reach, reach deep into that soul of yours that's somewhere down there and ask them, why do you not love me? <laughs> And it probably is not because you're a wannabe. You know what I mean? Like, it's probably not because you're a wannabe. You decided to step into a predominantly... <laughs> I'm giving him counseling. I'm giving my brother counseling. I'm giving my brother counseling. <clears throat> you decided to step in this arena that is mostly women. And you want respect. My camera is out of focus. And you want respect from women. <clears throat> Am I focused? I don't know what's happening. Let me try this again. I am so badly out of focus. Let me turn off the camera for a minute. I forget my advice already. And this is a problem because now I don't know what my advice is. <clears throat> I'll give it to you guys in a minute. All right, perfect. Ask these women, why don't you like me? Why don't you love me? Why? What Beyonce said, you got, well, you don't, maybe you don't got beauty, you don't got class. But anyway, whatever Beyonce said in that song, why don't you love me? Just really think about it, marinate on it and ask them and just come back and be better. I believe in you. You went through law, not law school. You went through med school. So you had to have gone through the rigor. You know what it means to be good at your job. Now, get the interpersonal skills and, and do what needs to be done. <laughs> Someone said Beyonce. <laughs> Beyonce Internet didn't want to hear the advice. Look. I'm giving them even if they don't want it. I <laughs> give me a second. I need to check my my phone. Look, I'm sorry. <clears throat> you gotta do what you gotta do, and it is what it is. You need to learn some interpersonal skills really get to know some people, really engage with some people, and they'll let you know, hey, this is what it is. Cantor said, he is mad at women for not going to him while simultaneously showing. I read this. Thank you. Um, I'll say it again. You can choose the most thoroughbred camel in the stable. He'll still spit on you. Don't choose him, please. <laughs> Pookie MD is in Omega Sci-Fi, hence the song. Oh, I know, I know, I know. Uh, my guy knows a man because he works at the hospital I work at, and I've seen him with patients. Other doctors recommend him because of his relationship to patients and co-worker. Yes! And, like, you are going into this field that is predominantly women, and you are going to have to engage in it maybe differently than you have engaged in other fields. And so attacking the other women, um, attacking the people who are going to women is not the best way. Just be good, be friendly with other people, build bridges instead of attacking people and engage in that way. Like, I feel like as a doctor, and maybe I am wrong, but most doctors I meet had this really kind spirit about them. Most attorneys are cutthroat that I meet. <laughs> most attorneys I meet are cutthroat, but the doctors tend to be like kind and like not this like mean, like not calling people the B word on the internet. 
I don't know. Like I thought you would look to Bullet Magnet, thank you by the way. I thought you would look to the like an attorney to be vulgar. Like attorneys can be real vulgar. Actually, people think I'm soft until they sit across from me in a negotiation table during a moot court or in court. They're like, all right, never mind. I underestimated him. I welcome being underestimated. If that means you're going to be off your guard, I will use that. I welcome being underestimated. Imagine going through that much school to do, right? Just ruining your, ugh, I don't know why you would do something like that. Uh, but those two women, like therapists, got cancer. Oh, true. true. I mean, yeah. Calling people the B word, I pro he probably have his own practice. They will say how all they think about is SEX and then be shocked that women are uncomfortable in situations as, yeah. Like, there are people online now talking about um, men generally and I, I find a lot of the conversations really meaningful because the the idea that so many of us are so willing to say that we're driven by SEX, for example, and then not understand why there would be a general distrust, uh, yeah, maybe we should push back and say, yeah, no, we're not driven by this. But don't lie. If you're driven by that, let people know. But like, yeah, like you can't say that on one hand, and how you should cheat and blah, 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 and men can control themselves, so women have to control them. Men will do what you allow them to do. High-value men should cheat, blah, 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 will cheat, are going to cheat, have to cheat. They can't stop it. Male nature is to reproduce, blah, blah, blah. If you keep doing that, like, you are building a reality about who you are. Be it real or fake, it's, some kind of re it's somebody's reality, and people are going to act accordingly. Don't be mad when people act accordingly. Thank you, B. Sinclair. <sighs> Theorist. Most women want female gynecologists like most men want male urologists. Like, duh. And people don't just say it out loud like, I don't know. Thank you. Imagine a woman doctor drag Englishmen about ED. <laughs> I'm going to order my food because y'all just playing. <laughs> yeah. <sighs> His 3.5 stars are from getting GTA. <laughs> I do have a question. I, I don't know if I should go to Kendra G first or talk about Howie first. Uh, what I am going to do is order this my food before it closes because these places really be playing in my face closing before 10 o'clock at night. Like, what do you mean? I need food. All right. <clears throat> uh, someone said we should go to Holly. So Kendra G, Holly, Kendra G. I feel like there's a tie. Kendra G. All right. Someone said I should end with um, Holly. We only have Kendra G then Holly, so let's just do Kendra G. Um, we have two videos from Kendra G, one that's not so bad and then one that's horrendous. So let's do Kendra G. <sighs> this was my second time. The first time they would eat me up because I had a, a scarf on. Cause you know, I'll be, I'll be rocking my little ponytail and stuff, but you ain't made me take it off, but they start eating me up. Cause I had the scarf on, you know? Okay. Your light is not bad. Let me see if it's me. Can you, I mean, I could work with it. I mean, I don't have a ring. I do like that you're situated now. You're not moving. So, but uh, it would be best if you had like a light in front of you. Like in front of me, there's a big light. That's why my light, my face is bright. No, I don't have, a, I work in production too. So I should know better, but. I don't know. This I is your second talk. time, right? Yeah, this is my second time. And the first time, if if you would allow me to blame you a little bit, because I said I wanted to marry up. And um, you was like, oh, so you want a woman to make more money than you? And I was like, 
All right. So that's the first thing. <clears throat> the first time he came on, couldn't find him, didn't find him, don't care to look it up. He said he wanted to marry up. Look, I am not going to sit here and chastise anyone, man or woman, for what they want. If you want to marry up, you want to marry up. It is what it is. But y'all are letting these people trick you into saying, oh, I don't have to marry up. I don't mind marrying down, blah, 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 and make you feel bad about you wanting to potentially marry up. And I find that horrendous. Like, I don't like that at all. So that's the first thing that I wanted to point out. Um, I don't like the fact that y'all are letting people tell you that you shouldn't, as a woman, want to marry up because that's gold digging, while these men are sitting online saying they want to marry up. Again, not saying he should want to marry up. I know a lot of people in the community, don't know them personally, but Based on research, a lot of women are okay with this kind of setup. So if he wants it, the community said he can have it. Not mad at that. Meanwhile, people are saying you should marry up. Girl, what? Period. All right. So that's the first one. Let me read the super chats because I don't want them to get stale. Um, he is one of the kids. Argue with me and his choker. <laughs> 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 Y'all play too much. Um, no, why would I want a 40% off alcohol? Do I look like a... a no. Um, I just know he was artwork of a naked light-skinned black woman bending the knee to fully clothe dark-skinned black men. I, I'm not doing this with you. I am not. A little bit nervous, so I said, Yeah. Um, what are you blaming me for? Because when I said marry up, I really just meant somebody who was classy, who wasn't necessarily like, um, you know, like drop a one in the chat if you believe the first time he said he wanted to quote unquote marry up he didn't mean marry up financially he just meant someone who was classy drop a one if you believe he believed that drop a two if you believe he was trying to go, get someone to provide for him a one if you believe that he wanted to marry up marry someone classy a two if you believe he lied and he wanted someone to provide for him Girl, ain't nobody believe in that. No one believe that by saying you wanted to marry up, you wanted someone who was classy. Nobody believe that. Nobody believe that. And that's what I don't like. I want you to own what you want so people who get in relationships with you know what you want. Like ghetto. So blame yourself. You could have said that when I said that. I know, but I I'm not a professional host. You know what I'm saying? Not, so. this, you don't I hate this. Why did you come back, sir? Why did you come back? Why did you come back? Please explain why you came back. Talking about, I'm not a professional host. You don't got to be a professional host when someone said, oh, you're trying to get someone with money to say, no, actually, I just meant someone who is, quote unquote, classy. I am only willing to marry up. I'm not willing to dig for gold. <laughs> Period. Because you be digging and there's no gold down there. There's no gold. There is no gold. You dig, 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 and there is no gold. It needs to be right there, easily accessible, right? It's like, ain't nobody becoming a miner. I think being a miner is such a hard job. Ain't nobody about to do all that to, to get some gold. Absolutely not. You all got to do is answer the question. <laughs> you don't got to be a professional right. host to all answer right. questions. All so right. you can answer the question the way... You wanted to answer that ain't my fault. That's your fault. Understandable. Understandable. I mean, I said if I could share some of the blame, 
You know what I'm saying? Obviously, I'm not taking blame for shit. By the way, you answer the question. If I ask you a question and you don't agree, you can say no. That's not what I mean. What I mean by marry up means A, B, C, D. Now, if someone says marry up, that does mean in my brain financially marry up. But if it doesn't mean that to you, when I say it, all you have to do is say, no, I don't mean that. So it's all your fault. It's none of my fault. All right. Well, let me clarify since it was my fault. Marry up does not necessarily mean just financially. Okay. What does marry up mean to you? Marry up to me just means, you know, a person could be, uh, they could have a, more stable familial status, so to speak, right? So they could come from good stock. You know what I mean? They could um, they could just be in a in a position that's considered more up rather than lateral or down. Okay, fair enough. I mean, does that really make sense though? If it makes sense to you, I mean, it's your definition of marry up. When I these people have literally no accountability. Demas, is this man that played footsie with you under the table? <laughs> is this the man that played footsies with you under the table? <laughs> no. Wait, did I miss a super chat? I think I might have just missed a super chat. No, I think that's it. All right, good. I think of... Uh, I think of more than what I have, right? So <coughs> let me think. No, I do. I still think of money. If someone says I want to marry up, Our naturally I think of money. But if it doesn't mean that for you, you clarified, you clarified it. So I received it. So I just Googled it, right? It said it's a term used in social science for the act or practice of a person dating or marrying a spouse of higher caste, social status, or status. Usually, but, but usually higher caste and social status and money is attached to that. You don't usually marry somebody in a higher class and they don't have money. Well, I guess it's debatable. I could, I could argue. I could argue that. We don't have to argue it. I was ready to move on. I said, if that's what it means for you, that's what it means for you. It doesn't mean the same for me, but that's okay. All right, Kendra. You know, I, I like to argue, but I ain't going to do it because I know you like to argue well, more. Not, well, yeah. listen. Again, zero accountability. Zero accountability. <laughs> Someone said poor in class. <laughs> Look, I'm pretty sure when my grandmother was young, she was poor and classy. Why are you telling this woman that she loved to argue when you came on her show to argue with her? Like, this don't even make sense. You came on her show to argue with her about something you said a couple shows ago, and you're telling her it is okay, y'all can move on because you know she loved to argue. What do you mean? This woman isn't even arguing with you. Kendra G was not arguing with you. She said, okay, that's how I used to see, that's how I see marrying up. Tell me how you see marrying up and then let's go with it. Because last time I told you about money and you said yes. Why are you mad at her for what you said? You said you wanted a woman to take care of you and provide for you. So now why are you mad? Yeah, Alicia, she's literally trying to move on. Literally trying to move on. And you are just up there like fighting yourself. She's like, okay, well, that's how I see it, but I could be wrong. What do you mean? I wasn't wrong last show because I told you what I thought it meant and you agreed that that's what you wanted. You wanted a woman to take care of you. That is fine. I let you say it. Now you are back talking about I need to take responsibility because you sell... You said you wanted a woman to take care of you. I need to take responsibility for you saying you wanted a woman to take care of you because you didn't mean you want a woman to take care of you. You didn't want a woman who was more financially stable than you. You meant that you wanted a classy woman. She should take accountability because you agreed that's what you meant when you said you wanted to date up last time. Now, make that make sense to me. Like, you actually left her last show, sat down, thought about it, came back and told her that she needed to take accountability for what you said. 
Like literally listen, like think about how, how, how that sounds. You are blaming someone else for what you said. You, you literally left the show, thought about it and came back ready to fight, ready to argue, talking about some, you need to take, Kendra G, you need to take responsibility because of what I said on your last show. What? <laughs> the way I would have moved you, the way I would have removed you with a quickness. Listen, it's not worth arguing. Well, hold on. Here's the deal. It's not worth arguing about because if that's what it means for you, I'm okay for what it means for you. But it doesn't mean the same for me. So we can have different interpretations of it and life goes on. Like, I'm not trying to convince you to believe my way. Yeah, no, we can agree to disagree. Oh, another thing I wanted to um, clear up, too, is a lot of people were saying, because I was, at that time, it was like about 10 months ago that I was on your show. And I was still um, in the master's uh, business administration program. And a lot of people was, you know, put me down. They were like, oh, you ain't going to school. You know, it's probably a fake school. And I think that's kind of jacked up. You know what I'm saying? As a black man, you know, I'm telling you I'm educated and it's all real. You know what I'm saying? You know, people can go. They can do the homework. If they really want to know the real. You know what I'm saying? You can call up Franklin University and you can verify. You know what I'm saying? So I'm currently a doctoral student because I did graduate mid-January. So instead of people being like, all congratulations, da, 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 da. They just. I did call up Franklin University and they did not have him there. His name here is NBAJ. I called them. No, one, they weren't willing to give me anyone's name. Two, I couldn't find a name called NBAJ on the website. So either NBAJ is not your real name, which is fine. But when you sit there, give us instructions to go call up a school to go verify if you are a doctoral student there and you don't give me your real name, I'm going to call BS. I'm going to say you're lying. I did. I definitely did. But I didn't have his real name. So I definitely asked if they know an MBAJ. J. There are some things they couldn't say, so I went on their website to look at it, couldn't find it. So that's not your real name. How are you telling me to go look you up and not give me your real name, sir? Because you think we're all duns. Like, we, we, we just duns. I only did it. I only did it because I wanted to say it on live. <laughs> Sorry. I only did it because I wanted to say it on live. Because I know that wasn't his name. But what I really want to say, you never gave us your name, so how are we going to look it up? Are we going to just email them with your picture and ask who this man and is he there? Who is this man and does he go to your school? How are we to verify this, sir? That you are a doctoral student. You couldn't pull up your computer. You came back. You left, thought about it, and you came back to fight. Why didn't you come back with some receipts, even some fake receipts? Even some fake receipts you could have came back with. These are my courses. My dissertation is on this. You could have came back. You have, the, I am a black man, so that's why you don't believe me. No, it don't work anymore. It's 2023. Saying I'm a black man doesn't do what it used to do. You don't just say, believe me, I'm a black man. I'm going to this university for my PhD. What? You came back to push back and let us know what's real. Do it. Give me receipts. Even fake receipts. Someone said Franklin University. <laughs> ah! <laughs> I don't think that will ever get... Pulled out his thunder's best tank for the video. Period. <laughs> um, steal his style, but take us into Black Grape Tank Talk, $500. Vivian Westwood, White Diamond Choker. Not the Vivian Westwood Choker, girl. <laughs> Meanwhile, 
Instead of just explaining who are you looking for with a PhD, I feel like you should, you're at the one percenters for academics. You should be fine. You shouldn't have to say you're looking for, you are not trying to date someone above you at this point. You've made it, period. You're lying, I believe. Just wanted to doubt my my level of education. You know what I'm saying? I got the school loans to prove it, and I got the uh, the actual education. So, you know, I wanted to put that out there too. So, okay. Thank well, you. congratulations. I see somebody in the comments say congratulations. I appreciate it. Congrats. Do me a favor. Bring the camera down so we can um, we can see a little bit more of you. There we go. Um, well, congratulations going out to you. And all I would say is you got to have tough skin for the internet. The internet is not going to be kind to you. And I get shit every day and I and I feel like I'm accomplished, but it rolls off my back. So if you enter the internet space, you're gonna have to be able to have tough skin. But on a stronger note, congratulations to you. That is major. Well, I appreciate it. I appreciate it. About the so BS. Jay, are you here to do this again or are you here to just cuss people out and clear names? <laughs> I didn't cuss, I didn't say no cuss words. You know what I'm True, saying? but I, mean, I gotta know are, are you here to just yeah, I'm, I don't still, know. I'm still, I'm still, I wanted to clarify some things. I'm still, okay. looking, I'm still looking for love. Okay. Only a couple of people hopped in my DM and none of them was meeting like the requirements that I have put forth. So. so let's start from the top. Where are you calling me from, Jay? I'm calling from um, Columbus, Ohio. Columbus, Ohio. How old are you? I'm 36 years old. I don't care. I'm bored. Let's go to another one. Mm -mm, not watching that. I didn't realize how boring it was initially. Let's go to another one that's less boring. <clears throat> Hello? What it do? Hello? Hello? Spray for me, be what it is. We out here. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, this thing what is your name? This thing G, man. You know what I'm talking about? Spray for me, this in the key, man. It's G. I'm really looking for somebody like you, though. And they run it, though. They, they turn up. Yeah. yeah. What? You're from? Oh, where, straight where from Memphis. Right? Straight Memphis. from Memphis, Tennessee. You already know what's going on. Yeah. We read it. Yeah. <laughs> and, and, and one Same. more time. Say Same your name for me, baby. Same G. Straight from Memphis, Tennessee, Hey, look. Put me some, I need some thick. We don't like, we don't, we don't want that too skinny. We need some thick. Yeah. Okay, we got there early. Let me get some more information. Hey, How old I'm are 30. you? I'm 30. Do I already know what's going on? Yeah, I got you three kids. kids. You already know I'm on national TV. Everybody see me. They know who I am. Y'all know who I am. I'm Stay I don't G. know who you are. Stay G from TV. You don't know Stay G? Ooh. No. You're going to do me like this. Stop playing with me, man. I don't uh, know. Do your research. Then be Stay G straight on TV. How can I do research? You just, you don't, I just don't like this. Because I'm going to be. You know what I'm saying? That's why I let the girl do it. On my face. Yeah. I let them do that. What? Furious, you need to be placed on timeout. One of the moderators, please put Furious on timeout and separately put me on timeout too. Go, <laughs> go, what is it? <laughs> I feel like obviously he's trolling. I feel like this this reminds me of Jamie. Like this reminds me of my conversation with Jamie so much. This is Jamie. Jamie is he. He is Jamie. They are one. Yep. On my face. I don't get it. You don't get it. Stay so you ain't never did that on nobody's face? No. Are you trying to troll oh, me right I'm now? I'm not famous. I'm not famous. I'm a famous entertainer. No. Yes, I am. No, you're not. So you, you famous. You famous and I'm not famous. 
That is a good <laughs> Absolutely not, stars. You were just placed on time out. Also, you have three seconds before you can comment again. These are the options we're supposed to choose. <laughs> I'm not up here saying I'm not up here saying you should know who I am. I'm telling you that a lot of people watch everybody, right now. Have never I bet you everybody who wants this under heard me. We're trying to I'm figure out a few drugs right TV, now. I ain't gonna draw that road in though. Let it roll. Let's get. What's up, baby? My kid is nine, three, and five. Are, are they all about no, the I got the same one? Mamas. But I'm gonna see the three, the third uh, one, the third one is the charm though. They get it. Are you yeah, I got you it. Want another baby mama. Mama. The third one is the charm, man. You know what I'm talking about? I think I I, I probably got I'm, I'm gonna get the third one for right here. Yeah, yeah, let me know. You know what I'm talking about? Who's gonna be my third baby mom? Well, before we get to that, why are you not with the three-year-old mom? You say what? You have a three-year-old. Why are you not with her? her uh, or his you know, I, I really like, I really like, you know what I'm saying? I'm straight for Memphis, right? You know what I'm talking about? So I really like to, you know what I'm talking about, move around. And if you ain't really, you, you know what I'm talking about? You ain't on the level to move around with me. You can't get down with me. You know what I'm saying? I'm the muscle. If you can't move around with me, you can't get down with me, Jack. You know what I'm saying? Um, this, by the way, is a problem. Y'all are judging him and like no one wants him. No, he said he had three children by two different women. So I don't feel like it's fair to say no one wants him and judge him harshly. What's wrong with his... <laughs> So your baby mama can't move around. It, it, you can't move around with me. You can't get down with me. So I gotta leave you. I don't need you. If you can't deal with me, you can't chill with me. Not at all big or small. So why you have a baby? Because you everything was like moving, like we were moving, right? We were moving together just fine. Then end up. You trying to slow down? How you gonna slow down on Stan G? I don't play no guy. If you're going to do that on my face, I ain't going to play no guy in which. Not at all. What do you do? For, I'm a friend. What do you do for a I what move. I made a move. You make you make yeah, I'm a rapper. Are you a rapper? I'm a trapper. You know, I'm a midget kid. You know what I'm talking about? We make moves. We do it like that. Yeah. Give me three seconds okay. of one of your raps. I'm counting money on the table. Smiling at you haters. You ain't making money. I gotta see you later. Stable the neighbor. Money before a favor. Plug in connected. I'm on like cable. Still in the hood like your famous corner store. With the deals on green skills, pharmaceuticals. Hey, you say you getting money? What the fuck is it? Stan G up in this bitch, dog. You all already know. Stan G. Oh, my thing. Oh, my. Hey. Oh, my. Hey. Oh, my. Well, now I know why Ooh, I never like it. Hey. Oh, my. Hey. Oh, my. Well, now I know why I'm going to be like that. You're going to do me like that. You're going you to do me like that. Uh-uh. I can't, I can't be dealing with you like that. Come on, man. Keep it real. You know the Lord is magic. Man, you, you trying to get on me. I know what it is. You want me. You want me for yourself. Just tell me. You want me for yourself. I would, I would, I, I would rather. Stop playing. I'm out here in Cali, too. Yeah, I'm straight in Cali right now. Uh. We can make a panic, baby, because I'm in Cali, baby. 
You know what I'm talking about? You want to make a pattern with Stan G? Look at this. Yeah, don't forget. Yeah, put your sexy look on for me, buddy. Do, 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 do I do drugs? No, I show love. I show the world love, baby. Um, he's a rapper, hey. I think, and from Memphis, 33, three kids. I'm a What's your Scorpio. zodiac sign? What you want to do? What you want to do, bro? Mm. So, so what? So, so what kind of? Mm -hmm. I'm gonna hang up. Oh, oh, yeah. Let's get it, baby. Let's get it, baby. Come on. Come on. Nope, not reading that. Say no to drugs, <laughs> Brandy Jones. Um, sad he a multi hyphenated rapper trapper. Period. Period. My, what kind I, of woman are you like, looking for? I'm gonna straight up how I want. I want to be ready. Straight up. Ready to like just ready to do whatever. You know what I'm talking about? Like ready to just ready to do whatever. You know what I'm saying? That's what I need. I need somebody just ready to I just pick her up, put her on my shoulder, and she just sit there. And I just listen, if you can't you can't continue to be very vulnerable. Well, now I will hang up with you. Okay. That's kind of why you want to be a hoe. Anything else you want besides okay, the vulgar you. stuff going okay, on in let, 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 let get it going. Yeah. She got to be ready. Like, you know what I'm talking about? See, a lot of folks be trying to knock the hoes and shit. Like, mostly, like, come on, let's keep it real. Most times, the hoes more cleaner than the regular female. Let's keep it real. Let's keep it real. Because regular female, they sneak around and do things and they do it unprotected. Nine one, nine one hoes, you know, do it like this. Enough. Enough <laughs> is enough. Kendra G wrong for entertaining this. However, get your content. Get your content. Um, because absolutely not. 30 years old <laughs> with elementary rhymes. Period. So let's get into... <laughs> Yeah, there was like 10 minutes left of that foolishness. Kendra G really sat there and just tried to play in our faces. I mean, I, I played it here too. <laughs> ah. All right. Let's get into Holly Bailey. <clears throat> Let's get into this. Holly Bailey is just what the music industry needed. We needed this kind of resurrection. Music was dying. The, the, the young ladies weren't doing it. Not only is she what the, mu the, the music industry needed, <clears throat> Holly Bailey, and I'm going to repeat myself a lot because a period. When I'm thinking about this, Holly Bailey just, them vocal scales are it. And here's why I like this in particular. If vocal range were a human being, they would be Jay-Z and Holly Bailey would be Solange and they would be in an elevator between the first and second floor. <laughs> between the first and second floor, they would be. They, they would. <clears throat> so... <laughs> So Halle Bailey is that girl, will be that girl. I don't agree with her decisions in life regarding who she decides to date, but I am not here to tell you who to date. You can do who do what you want, and that's just that on that. 
I've been a fan of the Bailey sisters for forever. <laughs> <laughs> I've been a fan of the Bailey Sisters since forever, and I love music. I took one music theory class in undergrad, and I think I know music. So please note that it is with this sense of arrogance that I endeavor to talk about Halle Bailey and her new song, Angel. She is, she is that girl. And that's just that on that. So Holly is that girl, quite simply. <clears throat> Her song Angel dropped, I think, last night. I woke up this morning to it and I posted it everywhere. I posted it everywhere because what y'all are not about to do is lie and say this song isn't it. It is what the industry needed. Um, this is the first single from her solo project. It is her um, debut as a solo artist. And I I really appreciate the texture of her voice. I've always liked the tone of her voice. I've loved the way she sings. Um, I really like when she was with Chloe, because I think their voices complement each other. Hers is very sort of eerie. Um, if if I had to make it a visual sort of create a visual representation of her voice, it would be like the beat is always below it and her voice just kind of floats on, on, on the beats on the music and the instruments. It's just always like just so beautiful and uh, feels like otherworldly. I love hearing her, but I've never actually thought about her outside of being a Disney princess as a solo artist because I didn't know fully what she would bring. And I actually think her music more than Chloe's, and I'm not comparing the two um, in a sort of competitive way, but in terms of musically, I think her music solo um, literally embodies what the Chloe and Halle um, brand was. And I find that interesting because I don't know why I thought that was Chloe. So anyway, song amazing. Let's get into it. All right. So the scene opens and I am here for it. Whatever you thought, every generation, every single generation has a vocal trinity, right? It was... Mariah, Whitney, and Celine. I don't know what the trinity for this generation is going to be, but Holly is definitely a contender. She is up there, she is in there, and y'all need to recognize that she got this. And you need to consider her for one of the three of the vocal trinity of this generation. Now, I know that y'all are thinking, oh my God, there are people who are, have technical voices. They're just so technically good. Their voice have so much, um, so much range. But what their voice lack is depth, meaning, and texture. Now, look, I love... Girl, I'm being shady. I like Ariana Grande. I, I, <laughs> I do like Ariana Grande. I do. I really do. It is hard to copy and paste someone else's voice, i.e. Mariah Carey. It's very difficult to copy and paste and get that close to it. Ariana Grande gets close, but her voice lacks a lot of things in my mind. It is what it is. It is my opinion. When I open the panel, you can come fight about it. It's fine. That's just that on that. Um, and I'm not putting Ariana Grande down. I'm only putting this up because that was the first person people were like, oh my God, she has to be one of the vocal trinity when I introduced my vocal trinity. What you mean, Ariana Grande has to be part of my vocal trinity? Absolutely not. She don't. She don't got to be there. I don't know what the new vocal trinity is, but I do know that Holly is a contest contender. And that's just that on that. All right. <clears throat> So, someone said Jasmine Sullivan. I do not put Jasmine Sullivan in this new um, 
in this new era. So like when I'm thinking about it, I don't put Jasmine Sullivan um, in this new era with, with these, the, these um, ladies. <clears throat> so Holly Bailey decided that she was not going to take um, just over the, 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 the movie industry. She wanted everyone to really hang it up in the music industry. She did The Little Mermaid. She's doing The Color Purple or something. I don't know. So she's doing all of that. And she's like, okay, I am going to give movies a rest because I just came and ate, right? I'm the, a princess. And so I'm just going to go over here into the music industry. And I'm just going to set up shop and just take over because it's just what it is. So for me... <clears throat> I I am annoyed at myself because I kind of underestimated her. I didn't expect to really, really like her as a solo artist as much as I like this song. Like I like I've played this song no less than thirty times today. I have played this song no less than someone said scissor for the vocal trinity. Um, Amara needs to be on timeout. You you are on timeout for the next 30 seconds. We are talking about a vocal trinity. <laughs> and you said scissors. <laughs> yeah, scissors singing in cursive. So, absolutely not. I really do like scissors, though. <laughs> And I feel like all the girl, all everyone should just sit down and let let her eat, let her take over. Um, because for me, this is what I was asking for when I thought when I thought about the the Bailey sister. This is what I wanted. The song opens with her asking us some questions, and I was in really deep thought as she was asking us these questions. Do you ever make it out of your head? Do you still swim in your thoughts? Do you still mistake your flaws for property? Something that just don't sit right with you, but heaven knows, heaven knows. And she is sitting there. The video is so simple. The <laughs> curse of discrimination. The video is so, so simple and elegant and beautiful and amazing. And her voice is just... It builds like the first like 50 seconds of the song. I've repeated it so many times that I didn't even get to hear the, the, the rest of the song until like after the 10th repeat because it was just so good. Then there, there's like a build up. There's this really amazing build up that I, I just love. By the way, the lyrics are so good. Let me show you. I, I, I think I included the lyrics and all of them. All right. The one lyric that I did not like, I loved it. It is fine, but I'm being nitpicky. <clears throat> I am being very nitpicky on this. And I wish she had said, your wings can, not can't. I wish she had said, your wings can weigh you down. Because the metaphor about, uh, uh, just the imagery of having wings that are meant to lift you higher in the world and fly or whatever, when you're walking that they are heavy, I prefer that imagery over can't. I don't know why. I mean, because I kept singing, your wings can weigh you down. And I had that imagery. So when I looked up the lyrics and it said, your wings can't weigh you down, I was like, oh, I wanted the other meaning. It's fine. However, beautiful imagery. I'm going to get into these vocals in a minute. Um, then she says, but angels make a way somehow. And if you fall, we fall. And if we fall, we fall in clouds. This song, by the way, as I understand it, it's supposed to be a sort of, how do I put this? It's supposed to be an anthem. It's supposed to be encouraging, but it starts out like a ballad and she's really singing. Like even the chorus, the way she actually layers the chorus, I'm sorry, I'm jumping all over this. Um, the way she layered the chorus, there is a, 
a, a male voice in the back saying angel when she's singing and like literally going up the scale. Imagine the imagery. Imagine the image I gave of her voice. <laughs> The vocal scale being Jay-Z and her being Solange in the elevator. When I said she was singing, she was singing. But that little touch where you had the um, the backup vocals just coming in like aggressive and hard while hers is like floating. Oh my God, it's beautiful. Let me go grab my food. My food says it's here. Give me two seconds. Got it. <clears throat> I don't remember where I was, but the, the it starts off like it was about. Um, I got oxdale. I got oxdale. Um, I am sitting there and I'm like really listening to her, like pushing herself and really singing, and like she keeps going up and I'm like, this is so good. But then I heard the chorus added to it and whoever, whoever did that layering, whoever come put that all together for the chorus specifically, whoever decided to do this. And she said she wrote the song, by the way, just impeccable, like amazing. So it's supposed to be an anthem and it is that. It is giving that. What I do want to hear is it the stripped down version. The stripped down version is what I want to hear. By the way, she needs her Grammy. She needs to be an EGOT, by the way, just from this. She is that girl. Um, I'm actually gonna say something. So I called, I don't have perfect pitch. Perfect pitch for me is the ability to hear a note and be able to name it from the scale. I cannot do this. I wish I could do this. I took one music theory class and I realized it's too much. It's too hard. I'm not about to do it. But it was like a D flat, a G, and then a B flat. And she's going, like, she's going through the scale like it's nothing. I actually am very curious. Sorry, I'm a nerd about this part. I am very curious to hear her do this live. Because I hope that it's not overproduced live. Um, I I want to hear her completely stripped down. I want the stripped down version of this song live. I want to hear her vocals. Because even as eerie as it is, it's very impactful. At some point, um, she is belting um, towards the end of the chorus. And I'm like, I didn't know... Sorry, I'm going to use some words right now, and I don't mean them directly. I'm just trying to think about how to describe her voice. So because it's so eerie and so specific and clear and refined, in my mind, it's like so little, right? The fact that I can hear it through all the mess of the production, and by mess, I don't actually mean the production is bad. There, there is just a lot of production. There's a lot of producing happening. But you can hear her voice through it, and you can hear her vocal. And for me, I want that stripped all the way. I want all the production gone, and I want to hear her sing this song because she is singing this song. This is what my soul needed. Like, she said, black girl here, black girl with the black girl here. Took a little sun kiss just to look like this. God sent you an angel. I like, God, period. Period. The sun kiss bit had me out there. The, if y'all make this go viral on TikTok, please use the chorus so that it can be very specific about who we're talking about. That's it. That's all. Anywho. <laughs> The imagery alone is it. Let me get to something that I like. 
She said, I'm a big deal. And I said, talk your mess. You better talk your mess. You are you are the Little Mermaid. All of them haters came online talking about mermaids can't be black, mermaids can't be black, blah, blah, blah. Until you make Jesus black, we don't care. I don't care anything that you have to say. And so when she's talking her mess, I'm sitting there here like, mm, I love this. I love this for you. You better talk your mess. You better listen to Beyonce in Ape-ish, um, how she was talking her mess, how she was talking her mess in Mood Forever. And you better give us, you better let them know that you are that girl, period, period. I'm a big deal. I get sick and tired of holding it in. Rich blood, you can probably see the gold in my skin. I'm more than a girl. Won't let the troubles of the world come weigh me. A period. Period. Like, I'm sitting there listening to the lyrics, and I'm like, girl, you better. You better. And you better also give us vocals. You better do that and also give us vocals. Because I'm sitting there like, yeah. Like I'm, I have an like I have an actual image of me with the first time I heard this song. This is me. I took I had someone take a picture of me while I was listening to this song because I needed to show y'all what I was going through when I was this. This is me. This is me listening to this song. the The first time I heard this song, this was me. Literally, this was me listening to her. You couldn't tell me I wasn't an angel. You can't tell me I'm not an angel. Girl, what? <laughs> I'm ready. I, I'm moving up. I have elevated. I have elevated. Like, you don't... You, you If you're not sun kiss, we may not be able to talk. Like, if you're... <laughs> we, we just... We're just not doing it. No, absolutely not. <clears throat> so, it has come to pass that we now have a new Supreme. It is what it is. Everyone else that you were thinking was leading, blah, 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 th this is our new Supreme. It is what it is. The, the music industry was dried up and out. It was done. We were over it. And now we come back. New life. She bred new life into this. She is the new supreme. Everyone else can go sit down for a minute. Let her have her turn. Because this is it. This is what we ask for. This is the representation we said we wanted. Yes, yeah, someone said, off this one song. Yep. Off this one. This one song ate the entire 2023 thus far. This is it. It is what it is. This is how you own something. This is how you show up in the world and take over. You show up, set up shop, and take over. This is all of it. I am here for it. Holly, I love this. I love this for you. Drop the DG and we're good. Drop the... <sighs> if you drop the DG, we're good. I don't care for the rest of the album, but I do hope it's good. But whatever you're selling, I'm buying. Um, there is this sense that I now have to talk about Chloe. And not in a bad way. I, I think Holly is doing amazing. And the reason I'm bringing up Chloe here is that I think we might need to take some accountability for um, Chloe. And I'll explain that at the end of this slideshow. Um, this, by the way, is Holly climbing the, 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 the stairs to get to the throne to collect her, uh, um, her crown um, because she has elevated so far beyond everyone in the music industry with this one song that she's just resting right now. Like the, the, the throne is there with the crown and she just decided to take a rest on the way to her throne to put on her crown. And she's just looking down at all the people scrambling right now, messing up their, their, their dreams, their goals, their diet plans. She just messed up all of it for them. The girls are now scrambling 
the girls and the boys scrambling trying to figure it out. Like we have um what's her name? That rapper, Swahahiti, dropping music. Like, girl, why are you dropping music right now? Don't you see Holly's out there? We have Sierra teaming up with Chris Brown, girl. I don't know why you you team up with an anchor. Like, okay, period. I don't know why y'all are dropping music right now. I, I don't know who told you to do this because she's literally on her way to collect her throne and she just stopped to look down and look back at everyone and say, ah, oh, it's really sad. So she's just sitting there giving you time to catch up. At this point, she's just giving you time to catch up. So she said, some might hate and they wait on your fall. Ain't that the truth? They thought the Little Mermaid was going to fail. By the way, she said she wrote some of this during this time and she was going through a lot. Um, and I have some videos of her talking. I'm about to play that video in a moment. But I'm just sitting there like, yeah, they really tried it. They really looked at you, look in your face, as beautiful, as talented as you are, and they really thought you were about to fail, as if failure is not a part of life, as if failure was going to stop you, as if you are not that girl, as if we didn't know that you exhibited all the signs of the powers needed to become the next supreme, like we didn't know that. They thought they were just going to come up and decide, oh, I'm no. Like, you had it. I don't know what is happening with these people that they keep doubting you, but they shouldn't. So she said, some might hate and they wait on your fall. They don't know there's grace for it all. My flaws don't make me beautiful and real are you. They cannot compare. Are you perfectly a masterpiece in all of me? Even my scars, even my scars. Yeah, period. Even her scars. Because girl, what? They really, like, I'm sitting here thinking about The Little Mermaid, and I'm thinking, yo, there was an active effort online to attack this woman who did absolutely nothing to these people. These hateful people decided to come online and drag someone who did nothing to them. And you just took that, turned it into a song, And then went off. Period. I love that for you. She said, I don't argue with... <laughs> I don't argue with these lazy... <laughs> she just wastes her prize. Period. And she should. And then the, she gave us imagery. She gave us black imagery. She gave us black ethereal imagery. I was here for it. I was just here for this. She said, black girl here with... Black girl with the black girl here. Period. She reminding you of who she is. She is reminding you of who she is. She's not about to sell out. Hopefully, please don't sell out. To, to, to go famous. She's like, I'm going to go to number one on the billboards. And I'm going to go there talking about my black girl here. And that's just that on that. And that's just that on that. What about it? And what about it? Period. Period. Still climbing them stairs, looking down, waiting for someone to catch up to her. Now let's do it. So she did a collage at the end of her as a child, reminding you all that she was that girl, even when she was in kindergarten. That's what she did. She, she reminded us of where she came from, which was ahead of most of her peers. And that's just that on that. I absolutely adore the fact that she included her sister in this, showing where they came from, showing love to her sister, and her sister in return showing love to her. This was so adorable, beautiful, amazing. Kind. Like, this was it. Like, I almost shed a tear because I was like, you better go. So now let's talk about Chloe and why we are to be blamed. I've said this before, 
and I will say it again. Yes, I only made the PowerPoint to go through her video. Yes, I only made the PowerPoint because I couldn't show the video. So I watched the video and screenshotted all the images to put on a PowerPoint to sit and talk about it through the PowerPoint. Yep, I definitely did that. I didn't do it to organize my thoughts. I didn't do it because I had anything theoretical to add. I didn't do it because of any... No, I did it because I wanted to take a picture of every single scene I saw in the video and put it out there for y'all to see that this was artistic work. This was great. The video was simple and amazing. Her vocals were everything. It was hard. Like the melody is actually really, really difficult because of how much has changed. The vocal, the vocals was just sick. So I can't wait again to hear I can't wait to hear her do this live. Like, I can't wait to hear her do this live. And when she was showing this picture, the organs playing were so beautiful. Like, I, that didn't miss me, by the way. That did not miss me, how beautiful the organs playing were as, as we were seeing these th them as children. Like, I... <sighs> Whoever did all the composition of this, y'all did your thing. Y'all ate. Y'all ate. I just, I just needed something to make a uh, pick me up, and yet this was it, and I appreciate it. Uh, Dollar Gamble has been a member for nine months. Thank you. All right. So Chloe, and this is not a drag on Chloe. Rather, this is a drag on all of us. While they were in the group there was an overwhelming voice saying, Chloe need to go solo. Chloe need to go slow solo. You can tell Chloe is the Beyonce. Chloe is the Beyonce. Chloe is hot. Chloe is sexy. Chloe is this. Chloe is that. And, oh, someone said, we really watch theme as fanboy for an hour. Uh, period. Period. The thing is, people said that I didn't like Holly and Bailey because I was critical in the beginning. And I'm like, when have I ever not liked them? I love, like, these girls are like my little sister in my head. I don't know why because ne I've never met them. But anyway, I really do like them. I don't like them people they decide to date, but that's neither here or there. Um, Chloe and music is not for me. Chloe's imagery is Chloe's imagery, and I think people get to be who they are. But I don't think that Chloe is getting to be fully who she is. I don't know this as a fact. I don't know this as a fact. However, it feels like we forced onto her this sexy rap girl image. And I think we all thought that's what, not me, I didn't, y'all thought that's what y'all wanted. And when she started doing it, y'all backed off and now she's stuck trying to figure out her image and her audience. And I think, I don't think Holly would have ever done that because I don't think Holly care enough about music, honestly. And that kind of effortless I'm doing what I want to do, it feels like from Holly, I think translates really well, at least for me. Um, but I think Chloe got caught up in us forcing, let me rephrase, in y'all, because it's not me, in everyone else but Themis, everyone else, forcing her that she is that girl and she is the Beyonce and you can tell she want to dance and when she's not with Holly, you can tell she's going to just destroy the stage because she, and that I think can get in someone's head and force them to think that they, I don't know this as a fact, that they have to perform a very specific way. And I think that Chloe is an amazing talent Actually, I, when I was listening to this song, I was like, oh my God, I wonder what Chloe would do to a song like this. Like, because she can sing, sing too. Um, and it's unfortunate that her image overshadows her music um, and that her music isn't connecting because I remember them doing an interview. And this is the sad part where it's... Um, 
Chloe and Holly were talking about how Holly did not want to be a singer or famous or in the limelight, but she kind of kind of went along with it because that's what her sister wanted. Um, and I don't know, it was that moment that like I can tell that this is something that Chloe really, really wants. And I don't know, it just feels like she's trying to please the audience where Holly is not... I, sorry, I'm comparing the two. I, I don't mean it in any derogatory way. I, they love each other, and I don't want to cause a split. I actually really like both of them. I have my preference, but I won't say what. But Chloe wants this so badly that it feels like she's willing to do what she thinks needs to be done to get where she needs to go. And it doesn't feel like it's just flowing. It doesn't feel like I'm not, I don't care about what, what kind of energy you're on. The energy doesn't feel like it's flowing. Um, and that's sad. By the way, Doja Cat drops music too. And I'm sitting here like Doja Girl. Now, you know, you would have been the supreme had you not been out here talking all your mess, telling people that they should unsubscribe. <laughs> Girl, you out here decided to marry today, not marry, to date someone who is apparently, allegedly an abuse, you know what, and a race. Um, and so, and then you, you mad at us. You mad at us. Why you mad at us, girl? Sweetie, out here just dropping music. Um, girl, even, what's her name? The Barbie girl. What's her name? Not Nikki. Nikki is that girl. The other one. The Spice Cabinet. Uh, I heard that somewhere. I didn't mean to say that. I Spice. Sorry, I, I'm not listening. We're over here. We're, we're over here. So unless y'all are on Hallie's agenda, you're not on mine. Um, but yeah, here's what Hallie had to say in the live lead up to it. Let's hear some of it. And I'll open the panel for a little bit. And then I have to go eat my food and watch um, The Witcher. You know, um, but that's what I need you to do. Life have been really beautiful, a really beautiful journey of self-discovery for me. Um, but it's like open, it's opened so many doors for me. And it's just been like this really eye-opening experience the last few years of my life, right? I have been living in actress world for a minute. I mean, this mermaid movie just took over my whole life. And I'm so grateful to you. So many of you are in here because of you seeing that movie of me. You know, you may not have known who I was before. And, you know, I'm really grateful for y'all's support and everything. And I think basically this song was a mixture of all my emotions and basically how i could be feeling so grateful for something but also so overwhelmed and like this is like a huge big thing that mermaid was for me which was i mean it was astounding it was amazing i've never experienced anything like that in my life but and i i put so much of myself into that character and you know, it brought on a whole new set of eyes for me. And I think um, basically this song for me was my kind of, I guess, affirmations that I would tell myself to keep myself being able to keep going. Because all of a sudden I was thrown into this world of so many different opinions and what people thought of me and was I good for this role and not even just that part of my life, but everything else in my life, like growing into who I am as a 23 year old, like who am I and what it takes and all the criticism that people will throw your way when you're literally just still trying to figure out what the hell am I doing? Like I'm 23 years old. I'm just like y'all. Y'all are just like me. You know, we're still trying to figure out life, right? Don't you feel like we're so grateful for life, but at the same time, we're like, 
we're kind of like chickens with our heads off. You know what I'm saying? We're running around in circles trying to figure it out. And you know what I admire about my supporters, like you all in here, is that you all really understand that I am human, you beautiful people in here. And I think that what I was trying to portray in this song is getting other people to recognize that, yes, I have all these beautiful opportunities and these things are happening for me, but I'm still just trying to figure out life. I'm regular, I'm human, I am flawed, I am all of these things. But at the same time, all of these flaws that make me who I am are beautiful and are the reason I am who I am. So so she said the mermaid movie. What she really said is, look, I ate in the movies. Now I'm coming for all the, the, the accolades in music. I'm coming for a Grammy. I'm coming for everything. I am coming for billboards. I'm coming. I am coming. Just know that. She's too humble to say it. So I'll say it for her. She said she's coming and everyone is quaking. She's, she's here to upset the music industry. And I am here for that. That is a lot of pressure. Um, not pressure for her. That's pressure on them. She's on everyone's neck right now. No one is safe. Everything is in her court right now. So y'all better scramble. Again, your dreams, your goals, your diet plans. She has come and she's taking all of it. So it is what it is. Uh, you were warned you were warned. You were warned when she sung a part of your world from The Little Mermaid, and you did not take heed. So now that she... <laughs> now, that... <laughs> now that she's here, um, she's just here for the coin. So Taylor Swift, Olivia Rodrigo, the all y'all people, it was a good run. You're like, y'all had a good run. <laughs> Not me causing problems. <laughs> Y'all had a good run. It is over. It has been over, but now you know it's over. I'm kidding. I actually like Vampire by Olivia Rodrigo. Um, Taylor Swift, Swift or Duffer, whatever. I don't care. She's here, and it is what it is. Now, there were people in my Discord telling me that I'm delusional. Let me, let me, let me put this. There were people in my Discord talking about, oh, Themis, you are delusional. The song ain't that good. I dare you to come up and say it to me now. I dare you to come up and defend Taylor Swift for Picker Upper. I dare you. I dare you. I'm waiting. I have pinned the link. I have pinned the link. So everyone who was in my Discord talking about, Oh my God, it's not that great. You need to remove her. Why you put her on Twitter? Why will you put her on Instagram? Why do you keep reposting her in the Discord? Why are you reposting it on YouTube? It was all over every single one of my social media. It was all in all of my group chats. It was in my staff meeting. It was with me everywhere. Everyone I know know that I love this song. I've sent it to them personally. I am going to make sure everyone knows and engage with this song. It is what it is. So come forth. Come forth. I will start calling names. I am going to start calling names in a minute. Come. Come. Because obviously you are not the angel. <laughs> you are not. You are the hater she was singing about. <laughs> ah, I'm kidding. I'm kidding. I love her. Oh, let me check. Let's see what they're talking about in my Discord. I don't see it. I don't see anyone coming up. Oh, someone said, hold on. 
Some the leader, the leader. By the way, the person who is about to come up is the leader of the Holly Hay train. It is the leader. Here we have, here we have the leader of the Holly Hay train. Kenny has been a member for six months. Six months, no Discord invite. Checking my head. Nowhere for a king to rest his head these days. Please go to the um community tab for members, and you should see the instructions. Um. The instruction. I'm sorry, Kenny. You've been here for six months. All right. So Tiff is the leading hater for um, Holly. I'm going to put her on the screen by herself because I don't want this kind of negativity in my life. Um, I drink water and I mind my business. Um, I, that's why I have clear skin. So let's hear Tiff hate. Let us hear Tiff hate on um, Holly. Okay, let me turn you down in the background. Hey, do you have the remote? Ugh. Hold on, See, this is what happens to haters, by the way. They can never get their stuff together. That's what tends to happen. It's called karma. It's a karmic reality. Um, no. You know, we 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 we've decided that you don't do metaphysics, so let's leave that alone. <laughs> uh, you can't hear me, Themis. The the violins, the violins. Thank you for the violins. You what violins? Yeah, there's no violin. You're hearing things with hater ears. <laughs> <laughs> I did not say that it wasn't good. I said her voice is entirely too pretty. Her I voice is too pretty. I'm done playing. I'm done playing. I'm done playing. I'm so sorry. <laughs> no, you're good. Go ahead. Oh, you're good. I I will say this. I'm. I want the the kids are all right, Haley and Chloe. Um, I can appreciate both of them doing solo projects. Um, I really think that this may be where we see, like in reality, balance. Because the balance between the two, like, Haley is not going to, I mean, she's going to give you a cute one too. But Chloe wants to, like, um, twerk it down. So it's enough ratchet and righteousness that it's like, mm, this is tasty. This is delicious. Um with with Chloe, it's just too much. She's is given church girl, and I get it, church girl, and you know the bad boy. But one, I'm gonna need for them. Please, 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 dump all of the damn boyfriends. Dump, run, give them away. Um, I would like to see when you said uh, what you said about. I wonder what Haley would do with this. I have the same thought and I'm just like, if they, I don't want them to fuse, but it's just like one is just so calm and um, soothing. And then it's just like, Chloe is just buck freaking wild. I'm not a hater. I am going to say that her voice is too pretty to be this produced. Let a uh, sweetie do this. Um, and when I'm saying, I'm talking about production. There are plenty of girls out here that they need that in their life. Sierra should have went ahead and had some extra production. <laughs> if you're going to be with Chris Brown, how can this song be that average? So today... Have you was heard? Like, I feel like we are not listening to it. Because, like, the way she goes up and down those scales, like, I, the last note voice, she does... Her voice is beautiful, and you can hear her voice because it is overproduced. That, like, you know, when they do their breath work, um, where you can literally hear the mindfulness of when they're going to breathe and putting in execution, and they play with their voices so well that they really don't need a lot of the extra. And I think that's where they're both getting caught up. That these are true talents and because so many of these girls are very quick very microwavable very um i i hit on TikTok that there's there's no talent there's no skill you said overproduce and it's the simplicity of the song that i love so much 
like I would want to hear it like not just an acoustic version that's not what I mean but like a stripped down version yeah but I love this version like I I think maybe I'll go back and I'm, I'm gonna say I probably came into it biased because I really did just think like okay she's just gonna give us just some vocals because she just did a really highly produced production in like part of your world. So I like, yeah. I, I love it. And I, the other thing is like, I don't want her to get caught up in like themey things like, okay, brown, like a uh, brown skin girl was a moment. I get it. Okay, black girl this, okay, we get it. But we know that you're black. We see how you represent yourself. I just want her to, somebody said I'm mad because she's not a thotty. No, it's not that. It's it's just, it was too much. It was just too much. Well, it's, give it a second, third, give it a fifth, a 50th listen to, but do I listen would, and yeah. listen for her because yeah. you, you seem to like vocals. And if you do mm -hmm. like vocals, um, if you listen to her vocal, even the chorus where the the other voices come in and there is a specifically male voice in there but like if you hear the sort of harmony and the layering that happens in the chorus specifically it is mm -hmm. so beautiful and the way she moves through these scales like it's nothing like i actually want to i do want to see her live because i want to see if she can do the like all of that live and i i think she can i've heard her so oh yeah before. So uh, they're they're both extremely beautiful, talented young women, and they're so talented they don't need the way that the girls are being put out right now. Like everything is a big production, Doja. Um, it's just a lot, and sometimes you don't you don't need it. You if they don't need it. Those girls could literally sing ABCs with nothing and I believe do something different every night. That is yeah. the level of talent. Like the one thing that you said, and remember we were talking about this when A and R, so what's the difference between the kid, the young girls now? Artist development. And she literally has one of the best singers and performers as a mentor. So I mean, coming behind Beyonce, that's just going to be hard anyway. I just think Chloe may be caught up in um, kind of like Rihanna. Once Rihanna did Good Girl Gone Bad and found her place, it was, it was her. I think they're just finding their range and where they want to be. I think that Hallie found hers. Uh, wait, Angel came on my Pandora this morning doing my my many walks. Didn't know it was new. Only knew that I never heard it and I felt no desire to skip it. Period. The first time I, that I listened to it and I was like, oop, period. The, it, the music industry is now yours. You are now in competition to be one of the three vocal members of the vocal trinity of your generation. And I'm here for it. I'm here for it. Uh, the Sanderson sisters, go ahead. Hello, everyone. Um, I just wanted to say real quick, um, the caller, the other caller on here, I don't know their name, but... Um, Tiff. Tiff? Mm -hmm. um, just a comment you made about um, her line about, you know, black girl with the black hair. And I'm not saying that this is you saying this, but I it just reminded me that I, I fear that you know, some people might say that, you know, she's doing that too much or she's trying to do brown skin girl or, you know, put her in a certain genre. Mm. But then it's like, we can't criticize that. But then if she was to do what Chloe did, like also criticize that, you know what I mean? So I'm not saying I'm that not that's what you're doing and criticizing her. I'm just saying like, when you said that, it made me think like, oh gosh, like there's going to be a bunch of people who you know, are going to say that, oh, like, why is she doing this, like, kumbaya type stuff, like, you know? No, I get it. I, but I think that's who she is. Like, when you, this is what I was telling Thema. So I'm like, think about COVID. Like, these girls carried us through COVID on, like, a tennis court. They were doing, they're very creative. 
they don't need it. So the sweetie, whoever did the producing for this track, that's who she needs to get in contact with. And whoever's the vocal coach, get in contact because this is the difference between somebody that is a true artist that loves their work, that they're trained and then they really mean what they do versus like, I'm a cute girl and I'm going to kind of ride this wave and see what I can do. Yeah. You get what, you get what I'm saying? But I, mm-hmm. And I'm not even saying it's anything wrong. I'm a deeper brown skin girl, so I can appreciate anything that's uplifting, you know, mm-hmm. deeper hued women. I just don't like all the extra, but the song in her voice, beautiful. The the graphics, hmm, it's like we've seen it all before. Mm-hmm. You know, like yeah. the video, I, I've seen this video before. I want them to let them be themselves. I think this is them being themselves though. But like, I do need, I forgot this one thing and I was, the song was playing in my head and I remembered it because it was in the beginning where she said, but if we fall, we fall in clouds. She does something called um, vocal painting or like word painting or painting with words. I think it's mm-hmm. word painting in my vocal theory class. And I don't remember ever seeing it where the notes actually matches what she's saying. So she goes, I'm not doing this, right? So if mm-hmm. we're on a scale or whatever and we're going um, down the scale, it's actually mm-hmm. doing that. the part where she said, and if we fall, we fall on clouds. That was vocal painting in the arrangement that she did and she did it with her voice, obviously, uh, mm-hmm. going down. The, this is, I need someone who is a vocal coach who is much better than I am at like perfect pitch where you can hear the notes. I can't. Um, I have to actually go find it. But I hey, what, want you to do a breakdown of these vocals because they are Maybe it. you and Alicia. Maybe you and Alicia could do it. That would be really cute. You and Alicia? Oh, actually, Alicia can do a video on it or like some, I don't know, you don't have to. If you want my platform to come and talk about it, please do. But also, if you did it on yours, I would love to see it. Uh, I and vitamin to too. Vitamin too. Vitamin scenes. I need to see someone who the production was to add the walk into the heaven effect, but there was no auto tune on her voice to clean it up. I just heard it add the echo effect. Yeah, I thought it was actually very stripped down. So, um, but I, I don't okay, know. But I like, I like famous, the fact that I will wait, say no, this. I will say move, this. Before you do, I don't hold on. I'm not the target one. I'm not the target audience. And two, what I've realized is, is I'm a neo soul girl. So. When we had Jill and Erica, it's a very different sound. So I have to embrace what the girls are doing. Like she's a young girl. And if this is her thing and what she wants to do, I have to embrace it. Yeah. Um, the, I like hearing the music theory that I... I, I don't want to say I'm studying music theory because people are going to assume that I know more than I do and I don't. Um, one class. But I like the fact that I could hear and see some of the things that I learned being mm-hmm. played out. I think this was a masterpiece. Like mm-hmm. I actually, like I'm listening to it and I'm like, whoa, not only can you sing, you can write, and this arrangement is sickening. All right, mm-hmm. sorry, in, insert alias, go ahead. I love that. Hi, Famous and everyone else. Can you hear me well? Yep. Um, yeah, I'm just a little bit confused with Tiff because again, the first time I heard this song was on my Pandora. So it's like the biggest critique you have is with the video portion of it. I don't see how that's a critique of the song and the vocals because like I only watched the video after I listened to this live and I'm like, it's a wonderful video, but like her voice, the song still comes through. So if the video is overproduced, just don't look at the video and just listen to the music. And I don't see an overproduction in that. Does that make sense? I think she thinks that um, music is overproduced. Okay. Mm. Okay. 
I mean, I think we disagree, but I see she said she's like into the Jill Scott sort of neo souls. So um, maybe no, like not no, but like me. The thing is, I think this is like not that much production. <laughs> so, um, but I would like it stripped back live. But I also really, really love like. The sound, and I think the Sanderson sister was talking about this, about how it sort of created this, it created the image of the video through the sound. Like, I'm not saying it's vocal painting, but it matches perfectly. Like, everything for me was just beautiful. Like, I, I, I the, the video, I watched it so many times. I was so fascinated by it that I clips, I clips, I started clipping for my, my PowerPoint. Um, but let's get into the after show, give our final thoughts, um, and then wrap it up. This has been four hours long. I can't believe y'all hung with me for four hours to talk about random stuff. So here, Freud, thank you. Um, let's get into the after show. Um, <clears throat> All right. So Tiff, final words, then Sanderson sisters. Tiff, you're muted, Tiff. When we played that thing, everyone went on mute. Look around, everybody, on mute. Okay, I'm sorry. Um, I think that she has a lovely voice. I enjoyed um, tonight, as usual, I look forward to watching the replay. I know it's going to be great. And I will listen to the song a few more times. I think um, I was saying, you know, I felt like it was heavily produced, but she made a very good point in just listening and not seeing the video because I may have just visually not, it may, do you know what I'm saying? It might have been too much feedback for me. So I will go and just listen and just hear the song and sit with it. I did not say I didn't like the song. I'm saying her voice is so beautiful and so angelic that I want her voice to shine and not necessarily hear the production. I don't want her voice fighting with it. Does that make sense? Yeah, that makes sense. Thank you. The Sanderson sister, your final thoughts. Yes. Um, I don't have much to say. I just, you know, I'm happy for Hallie. Um, no you know, man I should have to go. Sorry. <laughs> um, <laughs> um, yeah, I'm happy for Hallie. I, I think she has a very, you know, bright future ahead of her. I think she's going to get an EGOT. Like you said, I'd be very surprised if she did not. Um, and I, you know, I, I love Chloe, you know, I wish that she would kind of take cues from Hallie and sort of like really find her lane because I just think that she's struggling to do that. I think someone, this is not my original thought. Someone else said this, someone said that she's trying to appeal to like the shade room versus like her actual fan base do with that what you will. <laughs> um, so yeah, I just, I wish the best for them. And yeah, that's it. Thank you. I appreciate that. And thank you all. I will leave you guys with a, a commercial that you asked for. We haven't seen this one in a minute, so I'm playing it back. Best sense. Not I'm actually on mute. Look around, everybody on mute. When she does that, if you're in there with me when she does this, please, please, please stop talking, mm -hmm. stop singing, stop moving, stop, stop. Let's even stop breathing for a minute. <laughs> 
Because I need this Instagram. I need this picture. I need this video. I need the video. I need it where everyone is quiet. I need to be one of the few people online who has a video when everyone is on mute. And I'm like, period. I got it. Look, I might edit the video and just mute everyone. <laughs> if when it happens, everyone is not on mute, mute m- m- not me saying moot, mute, I am going to edit the video. I will note that I edited the video, but I'm going to edit it. So it is what it is. Um, it's not overproduction. Sometimes artists will add heavy production to music to create a thematic effect like MJ with Don't Stop Till You Get Enough, period. Um, so thank you, thank you, thank you all. Someone said, I need oxygen. Do we, do, if Beyonce says we don't, do we actually need it? I feel like that is a point of contention. We can debate this. You and I have. (laughs) (sighs) Sorry, I, I feel bad for whoever had ear things in. I shouldn't have done that. Um, all right. So I'm going to go. I'm going to build up a fort and I'm going to watch The Witcher. I appreciate you all. Thank you so, so much for being here with me. Um, again, I will close by saying you can step away and come back when you're ready. You can stay here. You can choose not to engage or to engage. Be comfortable, be happy. Know that I do deeply care about the community and I care about the people in the community. Um, And no matter what happens, and I don't know how to make that come through, but I I do genuinely, I do. um, I didn't think this was possible. So thank you all um, for making this possible. And I will do my best to be the best version of me every day, not just on here, but in real life um, as I've been doing. Have a wonderful, wonderful night. Good night, V. Good night, C. Uh, CC. Uh, the live was great. Good night, chat and themes. No more essays. Leave quietly. Period. Thank you. Also, please note um, for Sinji specifically, if you want to debate her, she has a price for which you need to pay to debate her. Do not. Email me asking me about debating Sinji. I, I don't know why y'all are doing this. She literally told you what her price is. She said she don't. Uh, she said verbatim that I should tell you. She didn't say this. <laughs> she she didn't say this. But I feel like she wanted to say, "I don't argue with you. I just raise my price." I think that's what she wanted to say. Um, so I'm just I'm just relaying. I'm just the messenger here. Um, so it is what it is. $5,000, <laughs> or what was it, a five-page essay? Um, look, apparently the five-page essay will get you to be able to negotiate the amount. Um, so, like, come on, y'all can do this. Leave me out of it, please. Thank you. Have a wonderful night. Look, I'll take the 15% if you all want me to be a manager. <laughs> If you want me to be an intermediary, y'all going to have to pay me for the time. Because in a way, um, absolutely not. You tried it. Stop. Literally go talk to her about her price, not me. What do you mean? Bye. <laughs>